Okay, I'm going to call the Finance Committee meeting to order for March 20th, 2023. Um, let's start with reviewing the minutes of, we had two meetings worth, right? Uh, that's correct. Okay. So the 28th, February 28th, revise, and then the... March 15th. Okay. Um, so we have a motion for February 28th. <clears throat> I move that we adopt, uh, approve the revised minutes for February 28th. Nope. Don't I'll forget second. to speak into your microphone. I move <laughs> that we, we approve the revised minutes from February 28th. Thank you. I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? No. Uh, since we're a mixed hybrid, we're going to do a roll call vote. Um, James Cambius? Aye. John Pereski. Approve, aye. Beth Brown. Aye. Mark Brennan. Aye. Allison Vandervelden. I think I have to abstain from that one. I don't think you're here. Uh, so. Chalfin, aye. So that's one, two, three, four, five, zero, one. That passes. Um, the other one, what was the other one? Last week's. You said you had. I did send. Yeah. You got it. We'll just discuss it verbally. Um, okay, let me find it. <laughs> There's a revision on it. I didn't see it. Mm, I just sent it. Revision for this one? For March 15th? March, for 15th, March 15th, you're talking about, right? I sent a couple of notes too earlier. I'm sure you got them right. Oh, for the February 28th? No, for the March 15th one. Just, I sent them a few hours ago. Like, oh, okay. I have not seen anything for the past few hours. Yeah. Right. Okay. Today, maybe we should hold off on that. So maybe we just wait on those ones till next week. Right. You can incorporate the comments. Okay. And, Mine um, were minor, but. Okay. All right. So we'll skip that one. When you resend them out, would you be so kind as to like highlight the change or something? Sure. Or I think change. you did on the last one. Well, last time I did strike. Yeah, things, that worked. Okay. Out. Whatever. Something. To, okay. Thank you. Okay. Zoe, yeah, I think we're ready guess. for you. Okay. South County EMS. Yes, and that should be in tab 10 for you. And I handed out a newly revised one today. It didn't affect the bottom line. Uh, the gist of it was moving the IV pumps into the regular budget instead of into capital because it's only $7,000. Whether it hits this year or next year isn't gonna make a big difference in their budget, so. Great, thank you. Uh, Real quick, uh, because I've been making my rounds, I've recently changed my name. So I am I go by Zoe Smith now. Um, Z is fine too. And uh, Chief Smith still works. So thank you very much. Uh, I'm here for South County EMS. I like to kind of do a little preamble really early on for the people at home so they understand what South County EMS is. We're a town of Deerfield department, uh, but we are an enterprise fund and we were created through an intermunicipal agreement with Sunderland and Waitley. And the idea is that all of our costs are out in the open. They're all transparent. Um, everything that we're responsible for, for running our agency is right here on the page. So OPEB benefits aren't in a separate budget someplace else. And that allows us in the end to divvy up the responsibility for paying for the service amongst the three towns. And there's a established formula for that, um, that basically uh, cost shares uh, for the total agency. So the way that we budget is that we figure out what it's going to cost to run the department and provide the level of service that the three towns want and my board of oversight wants. Um, and then we also bill for our service. So medical insurance billing, uh, when we transport somebody to the hospital, we bill their insurance. And so that money, that revenue is then subtracted out of, out of our total cost so that we help fund ourselves in the enterprise fund. And the difference is what actually gets assessed to the member towns. So big top line item. We are a 24 seven paramedic level service. Paramedic is the highest level of emergency medical care and paramedics go to school for up to three years. So they have significantly more training than other first responders, public safety professionals, and uh, the most highly trained in the public safety field. After they go to school for that duration, they do rotations to the hospital, um, other ambulance services, and, uh, and they come work for us. So providing that one ambulance 24-7, 365 days a year, uh, plus some sprinkling of some additional staff during our busiest hours uh, is going to cost an FY24 $1.6 million. Um, that's just the cost of doing business to, to provide that level of certification and training. But thankfully, because we have 
uh, revenue from the billing, we're going to count that towards the total cost. So for FY24, uh, we're anticipating getting $625,000 back from billing insurance. Uh, that is a slightly conservative number because we would rather um, undercount that number and not come up short, you know, towards the end of the year. So we subtract that out. And also because we're an enterprise fund, we have a thing called retained earnings. So the same way that the town has a general fund, um, the South County EMS enterprise fund, money that we don't spend or additional billing revenue that we get stays in our account so we can put that towards our following year. So that's another 292,000. Um, so together that's um, well, $917,000 of revenue that we can subtract right off the board. Um, so that leaves assessed to the members towns uh, for the service, $702,324. And Deerfield's share of that is 51.7% or $363,531. So that $1.6 million service, Deerfield's share is 363,351. And I believe that's a difference of 17,000, um, close to 18,000 from last year. Um, the difference there is, uh, you know, we've got some general operating expense increase thanks to uh, cost of living, cost of supplies, things like that. But the bulk of this is all in personnel. So personnel is always gonna be your most expensive thing. Um, and so all of our personnel, we have 10 full-time, uh, we have 15 per diem personnel. They're all receiving a cost of living increase of the 3%, which is recommended by the personnel committee. And then on top of that, the full-time members all also get their customary step increase uh, for their years of service. So those numbers combined bring our salaries and wages up, and then the benefits costs are up as well. Those numbers are supplied to us by the town of Deerfield, um, and they're quoted. So that's that's the numbers quoted to us. So those are that's the the bulk of our um, source of our increase. Um, thankfully, we're also seeing an increase in our anticipated revenue as well. So we're able to offset that um, quite a deal. Uh, from this point, uh, probably pointed questions or general discussions that I can help answer. Um, Go ahead, yeah. John. Um, do you have, a well, the wages are up. Do you, have, do you have additional people in this budget that you didn't have in 2023 because the medical billing is up? Do you have more volume? Uh, yes, uh, more people? we had eight full-time staff. Um, that does not intrinsically cover all of the hours that we need to staff an ambulance. Um, so actually for two people on an ambulance 24 seven, um, it's, it's about 17,500 hours, staffing hours that we need to cover a year. And so eight full-time people isn't enough. Eight, eight, a full-time person actually only works about 1800 hours a year when you factor in the 13 paid holidays and, and things in their vacation time as well. So we increased it to 10 full-time. So we brought on uh, two more full-time staff last year with some money that we had available to us. And so that's what those in, um, expense increases are. So that was, last so that was in the about, budget last yes. year, right? We talked about that last year. The, we, what we were doing is, so we had the eight full-time staff and in order to cover all of those hours, we had uh, part-timers. And so we weren't spending down the part-time hours because part-timers just aren't available. If you're going to be a paramedic and go to school for three years, you need a full-time job. Um, and the part-timers that we do have are all full-time paramedics elsewhere. And certainly after COVID, you know, they put in 40 or 48 hours at their regular job. They don't want to work another eight or 16. So we found that we were underspending the per diem line item last year and overspending are over time to try to fill those those shifts. So basically we spent the money that had been allocated for the per diems that weren't being filled to help fund the additional full-timers when we did a hiring round last year. So now it's actually shown in the budget that that money is basically moved um, over. Okay. Because I remember I guess, talking about that last year. I thought oh, we ahead. added them last year. Yeah, go ahead, John. Uh, full-timers, the two additional full-timers came on in April last year. Last year being 20... 22. 
Oh, so they were in this. So they were in oh, last sorry. year's budget. I thought they were. Because I remember, Oof, I remember uh, talking about it last thank year. Thank you for correcting me. This <laughs> aspirin that I took two minutes <laughs> <took> an hour <laughs> ago is really hitting me hard. Yeah, you're right. Oh, absolutely. You're absolutely right, right. Because you can see that in the budget. The per diem staff went from 180,000 to mm -hmm. 88,000. To 88. Okay. Yes, yes, Good. correct. Go ahead, John. Sorry. Um, so that increase then is additional hours or is it is a rate the, the what the full-time staff line item the call staff yeah from 88 call to staff, 113 full-time staff oh <clears throat> so we um, is it is it additional hours or is it what's the what's the rate of pay increase yeah pay? so so that is both a three percent increase in the per diem staff across the board in their in their normal pay rates and that also is some additional staffing so we okay i think you answered my question it's so what happens is the 10 full-time staff if everybody is at work we have increased capacity in our system so the the additional full-time staff hours that we have available when everybody's at work staffs a second ambulance three days a week uh nine to five that's our impact shift and we were staffing our the remainder of that impact that second ambulance nine to five monday tuesday or the other four days a week with per diems and that's what that eighty eight thousand in fy 23 represents we found that that full-time staff they're backfilling when a full timer is out on vacation or on mandatory training or something like that, and we didn't have enough money to then keep the second ambulance staffed. And so the result was if we moved one person out of the second ambulance, we were down to one person and we were missing out on the revenue that we would be able to generate um, by having another per diem basically backfill that person. That's part of the reason why we're seeing an increase in the revenue is because we are more consistently staffing that second ambulance. Um, so that difference in per diem staffing expense is covered with the increase in expected revenue because the second ambulance is doing additional calls. Okay. What about overtime? It's like an, it's a new line item. Overtime holiday pay, I'm sorry. Yeah, so I, this is, um, this is a fluke with our town bylaws, and we go through this every time we have to do a budget. We are not collective bargaining, uh, we are just governed by the personnel bylaws in the town, and the holiday bylaw is that holidays will be paid at the normal rate, and that's basically all it says. Those bylaws were written when, you know, we thought about front office staff, they'd take the day off and they would get eight hours of regular rate they'd only physically work 32. we're open 24 7 so our staff members are still working 40 hours a week so practically the way that that bylaw works out is that their timesheet shows the 40 hours that they're physically in uniform on duty and then they have eight hours of holiday straight pay included in that pay sheet and so it ends up being they work 40 but they get an additional eight hours of holiday okay. we've been hoping that there's been this discussion that we're going to get away from the personnel bylaws and point to actual personnel not regs but i forget um policies thank you um and we will be able to kind of fix this language there's no provision for just holiday pay for working those hours uh, in the bylaws the way it is. So so that is an artifact of the way that the bylaws are written. Um, the employees are not actually working additional hours for those hours. Where was it in prior years? Uh, it was the it was incorporated. So in 2023, 2022, when we added those full time staff and in 2023, we were trying to reduce the amount of overtime by increasing the amount of full-time staff. In that time, we've discovered that 
we kind of undershot that. We're going to really bump up against our overtime line item in FY23 this year, just because of the nature of the overtime and public safety and emergency response. Um, we aren't able to correct for it the way that I was hoping to in the FY23 budget. Um, so we added a holiday. So that's an extra eight hours um, times 10 people, right? So an extra 80 hours right there of holiday pay, which is time and a half. So that's a multiplier. So as pay rates increase, then that line item for overtime is going to increase exponentially as well. Um, that's why we see that jump there. It's the additional staff. It was kind of under budgeting on 23 uh, and trying to get us back up to where I think is going to be more appropriate. If this ends up being too much, it will remain in our retained earnings and it will go to lower our assessments the following year too, and we'll be able to hone that, that number a little bit better. We're definitely in growth right now, um, certainly with the second ambulance staffing partially and our call volume going up 10 to 12% a year, trying to figure out exactly what our staffing model needs to be and how much overtime we're gonna incur uh, when we don't have overlapping shifts. This is me trying to, hit the bullseye on it and kind of missing an FY23 and having to course correct in FY24. I have two more, I don't want to hog. Yeah, please. Um, electricity, all of a sudden it's $5,000 and it's never any in prior years. Uh, so when Where you're, you when you are building, huh? when, yeah, when you're building a building, uh, there's like a flat rate for construction where they'll, they'll run the power and you can build the facility and it's supposed to, hand off uh, to a regular service uh, and they're supposed to read a meter. That didn't happen. Okay, uh, enough and said. Yeah, <laughs> okay. and it, it finally did happen. So that number is um, actually representative of what our uh, electricity usage is at the station. One more. Yeah. The town of Deerfield indirect costs went down, yet our internal costs are up. So I don't know if there's a formula that calculates yes. that. Or... Yes, there is a formula that calculates that. Because I would have expected it to increase. So um, I think we talked about this earlier. I actually don't have a copy of, of theirs here, but um, it is a percentage of the operating costs of that organization as compared to the total amount to be raised for the town of Deerfield on the tax recap and their percentage has actually decreased. Wastewater treatment has gone up quite a bit because of debt. Oh, thank you. Is that for this year? It yeah, is, that's it? the current one. Oh, yeah, I just did print one. Um, I'm, trying, I'm trying to remember, I- That it, 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 it answered, saying there is a formula. There is a question. formula, yeah. And it's the same formula across the board. I use the same formula for the senior center and the wastewater treatment plant as well. Okay. Um, there's just a couple of little caveat differences depending on what's in the budget. Like for instance, uh, their budget automatically includes certain things that maybe the senior center budget doesn't. So there are more, maybe more costs that we allocate to the senior center, that kind of thing. Um, without looking at it in a lot of detail, that's about as much as I could tell you at this point, but I do know that the percentage of their budget as compared to the total of the town was less than it was last year. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Jim, you had a question? Well, I was gonna ask something similar about the, the indirect costs paid to Deerfield in the budget contributes to the amount that Deerfield is assessed. Mm -hmm. Can't we just like forgive it? <laughs> well, then Sunderland and Waitley wouldn't be paying anything. Right to pay part of it too. Yeah, I, you're, you're absolutely right. So right, everything that goes back to Deerfield, really Deerfield's paying 51.6% of that. It's just about the transparency. So these numbers are all the budget numbers, there's no actuals in here. Right. Is that true? Right. I was thinking about running in real quick and just printing you off a revenue and expense for as of today, but I don't know if that would be helpful to you or not. <coughs> that one through March. March 1st. Yeah, March 1st. 
So I'm, I'm still confused about the personnel thing. So yeah, the, I, I, um, so the full-time staff went up 5.8%. So that's the 3% plus 2% plus a little bit. Plus two more people. Oh, sorry. I keep doing no, that. I'm, you're right. Still, yes, should you're be, right. Yeah, it's if the I just take 23 to 24, yeah. that's yeah. 5.8. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Sorry. Right, the I call staff, it. and you said that was like 17,500 hours worth of effort and 1,800 hours per person. Is that what you said? So that's 18,000 hours. So that should cover the two full-time ambulances. Yes. Full -time. Uh, that covers one ambulance 24-7 with full-time staff that can cover vacations and you have a and second ambulance that's where the extra the so the right so the 17472 is one ambulance 24 7 the 18,000 is worth the two extra people And those are the two are, are what is it a expected billing returns i forget the language but basically it's in the 90s percent so you have what you bill out what you expect you will receive back based on negotiations and established rates and what we get back is in the 90 percentile um, for that which is exceptional for our other insurance for our self pays. These are people who have like burned through all of their their insurance already that year, and now they're wholly responsible and things like that. It's much lower. Um, I forget what the last percentage, but it's like high sixties or low seventies percent or something like that. So combined, we're in the eighty percent. Uh, thankfully, in Massachusetts, we have mandatory uh, insurance, but a lot of people still opt for the tax return penalty or whatever for not getting insurance because it's still the cheaper option for them. <clears throat> but that that 80 something percent is good, is actually very good um, compared to some other communities that don't have the same um, socioeconomic base that we have in these three towns. Um, <clears throat> as far as, I feel like this is the next, <coughs> next uh, logical question. Can we increase that, that percentage? There's a couple ways that we excel in making sure that that percentage is as high as it already is. And that's the way that we gather information. We capture it electronically. It's forwarded electronically to our medical billing company. And so they can pull that within the week and bill insurance immediately. That's how you get insurance returns is you don't, you don't drag it out. We've identified some places where we could probably do a better job of gathering some additional information, things like social security numbers or um, insurance um, policy numbers and things like that. Um, it becomes a difficult balance when you're in the back of an ambulance and you're treating somebody medically and you're, you're trying to pivot to the question about, so you know your credit card, what's your imbalance on it? <clears throat> but we've identified some ways that we can better do that. Um, and then the other option available is the money that isn't being collected that like that low per and actually we like 100% self pay um, people. Some of these people like have the means right and they just ignore the bills um, and we have the option to send those people to collections. South County EMS has a board of oversight it's comprised of uh, appointees from the three member towns. And we've spent a lot of time to develop a collections and write-off policy that we feel is fair and equitable. Um, but in application, it's it's really, it's like, what, what's the analogy? It's an ax when what you want is a scalpel. And so the Board of Oversight right now is working on a <clears throat> collections policy that will see if we can increase that percentage return because we're trying to fund this service up front and and keep the lights on but also not dissuade community members from calling 911 if they need an ambulance um and and all of the clever ways that you start thinking about you know like oh we'll only do it for out-of-towners or you know we'll we'll look up something and decide that we're going to charge this person full price and not that person 
ends up always being um, insurance fraud. So <laughs> we're trying, we're trying hard to like thread the needle there. Um, the spectrum is some communities just close their eyes and send everybody to collections and put a lien on everybody's house um, and do everything they can to get every dime out. And other communities fund their ambulance 100% from taxpayer and they never bill anybody. Um, and I think it, that's just a value judgment uh, and whether you can put your wallet where your mouth is. Um, and I think the Board of Oversight is trying to find that middle point that aligns with the the ethics and the morals of these three communities while also being good stewards to the budget. I feel like this is going on forever, but I actually still have questions. I'm sorry. I, I, so, so the 1300 calls per year. Yeah. I remember a couple of years ago during like the depths of COVID, your call volume was way down. Yeah. So is that 1300 kind of back where you were before COVID? Is it higher? Is it... 1300 had COVID not happened, I would have expected us to be at 1300 probably in 2021. Um, so I, it's definitely rebounding. Um, I think, I think probably the spike return we've seen already. I mean, we dropped down to like 888 calls, I think was the number that COVID year. Um, I think we've seen the spike increase. I think we're probably going to see a trend right around 10% um, going out from this point forward. So another 130, another whatever, 153, another um, year over year, um, assuming you know no major significant changes that I don't anticipate at this point. Anybody else have questions? No. Um, Carolyn, you had said something about Board of Oversight wanting to look at this budget again. Um, well, actually, we were uh, posted as a select board meeting, um, or thought we were posted for a select board meeting, and we were concerned about the overtime. You know, we, we thought maybe we could be looking at the overtime, but we can't vote on it tonight because it's not a posted meeting. We're going to be discussing it on Wednesday. Um, I, there is a board of oversight meeting tomorrow that I will again bring up um, overtime, and I know that we've discussed it and discussed it, but I did come to you last year and say that we're gonna, add, you know, we were adding the two additional people. And the reason why um, we were adding them was because we felt we could reduce overtime. So there is that question still. And I, as a select board, we have not voted on it. And there is gonna be more discussion tomorrow at Boo, I think, because, you know, we're hoping you know, all departments could be a little bit lower. You know, we have to, you know, we're trying to cover um, the budget and make sure that we have room for capital. So the only way can we do that is to have cut some from everybody's budget a little bit, so. I, I'm, I'm happy The I mean, overtime is always a concern, right? Um, uh, overtime, I will say, is only an issue if it is an issue. Uh, and by that, I mean, if overtime is either causing employee burnout, so you hire somebody, they expect to work 40, and you're holding them for 56 hours a week or something like that, and you have morale issues and, and safety issues, or you're spending overtime instead of just hiring that additional office person. Um, you know, like we're paying, you know, over 2,000 hours a year in overtime, let's just hire another full-time person and take on this workload. The overtime for South County EMS um, works out to, I think it was like 1300 um, hours a year. Um, and that is in, I made some notes here. Um, the, there, are, there are two reasons why South County EMS incurs overtime. One is your late or early calls. Um, those are the calls that you're supposed to come out, at, get out at three, the call comes in at 2 p.m. and you're held over. Um, normally what happens is, you know, our shifts because of staffing hours start and stop at the exact same moment. We don't have any sort of natural overlap there. We don't have enough staff for that. So somebody is either basically punching in early or punching out late to cover those, those calls. And that is because we are minimally staffed for that one ambulance 24 seven. 
that is our goal. That additional full-time staff we have um, three days a week, they're the ones that are moved around in the schedule to cover vacation time and mandatory training. Um, the other reason why we have uh, overtime is when we have a last minute call out or a last minute sick. You know, 7 a.m. is when your shift starts. You wake up at 5, 5.30, you realize you have a sore throat. You don't want to come in and put immunocompromised people at risk or something like that. Um, and so now we're scrambling because our minimum staffing is two people 24 seven, and that's what you need to run an ambulance. As soon as one person is out, we can no longer run a transporting ambulance. The way that we handle that is we page out, literally page out um, and email and text message and open call to our per diems um, to see if they can come in, uh, if there isn't that additional A2 staffing to cover. Um, and then if they aren't available, then we will see if there is somebody scheduled on a A2 shift later in the week who can come in then on short notice and we'll just take him out of the later shift. And if that isn't available to us, then we would ask for somebody to hold over, um, you know, a couple hours until our nine to five can come in or, or get in there a little bit earlier, things like that. So those are the two causes for overtime. Uh, as I said, our overtime is about 1300 hours a year, which is not enough um, to justify another full timer. Um, it would be more expensive to hire a 2000 hour employee, right? Um, not to mention that the times at which those, those types of problems occur are not scheduled. That's why we're incurring the overtime. So it'd be impossible to say this full-timer needs to work at these specific times. Um, additionally, the other way that we could eliminate this um, problem would be to either, when somebody calls out and we decide that we're at the point of overtime and nobody's available to just not fill the shift, but then we're not meeting our, our mission and we're actually failing to meet regulatory requirements, or we can just hire more staff intrinsically. This is what a larger full-time department does. Um, a Amherst Fire, Northampton Fire has six people on shift. So if one person calls out sick, two or even three people, they can still staff their ambulance. Um, and that is also not cost-effective. Uh, for us at this point, uh, hiring additional full-time people just for a thousand hours of overtime. And actually that thousand hour overtime works out to about two hours of overtime, or excuse me, eight hours of overtime per employee per month, um, which is well below the threshold that we're worrying about employee burnout or safety issues. Um, it also rewards employees who remain available, who don't schedule things immediately before or immediately after their shifts. So there's a longer, longer windows for them to recover between shifts. And it allows us an opportunity as a department to be more flexible. It's the same reason why, you know, the highway department, you know, you can't plan for a snowstorm, but only to a certain degree, right? I can't plan when those late and early calls are going to come in. So being able to spend some overtime to reward those employees that are willing to, to kind of ebb and flow with our, our needs is, is how we're doing that. Um, if we want to eliminate the overtime light item, I'm happy to do it. Um, it's just going to cost way more money. Um, and yeah, Brenda. Well, I, I just wonder, I think you have 24 hour shifts. What, what difference would it make to not do your 24 hour shifts and cut back to 12 hour shifts or 16 hour shifts with that reduce our overtime? I, 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 that's I don't a, know So that's much. a great question. Not all of our shifts are 24. Uh, some of them are. The nice thing about a 24 hour shift is that you eliminate the early call, late call overtime problem because nobody is coming on or going off shift in the middle of the day during our busier hours between 7A and 7P. So there's that. Um, the downside is if somebody's sick, you're right, like they have to call out 24 hours worth of work instead of eight. And it may, makes you know, a larger problem to try to, but with a larger, larger group like that, we can call on our per diems better because you know, if, if I've got somebody calling out from a 7A to 7A and I put it out to my per diems and they're like, oh, well, I gotta drop the kids off, but I can be in at 10 and I can work you know, until 10 p.m. That's like, great, you take the 10. So now my problem is significantly less. And I can instead maybe hold somebody an hour in the morning to cover a gap instead of having to, you know, 
fill a whole thing. Okay. Um, I, yeah, it's it's a complex problem. The I, I would love I would love four people twenty four seven, right? Because then then somebody could call out sick. We could do these things, and it wouldn't be that that constant struggle. Um, but I will say the full time staff is very good at South County EMS moving schedules around, accommodating themselves, changing their lives in order to keep their hours at 40 um, and and be flexible in a way that I think, you know, the community really benefits from. And and do you go out on an ambulance yeah. when when you have when you're short? Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um so my my hours uh, just like the police chief would go on calls when you know things are going on or a fire chief goes on every call, right? Um a hundred percent I am there Monday through Friday. I obviously have administrative um, duties, but I routinely go on ambulance calls. I cover shifts, um, okay. things like that. Yeah. I have a uh, question. Oh, I was going to say, I think Trevor did too, but no. 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 Oh, okay. Oh. Okay, got it. Um, you might have said this already, um, but how much does it cost to staff? Like, what is the cost for the second ambulance? Uh, paramedics make about $30 an hour. Um, so you need, and then EMT basics are $23 an hour. So you're averaging about $26 an hour times two. Um, and that's what, it, I mean, that's what it costs. The, the equipment costs, the things like that, that's already paid for, that's already in our inventory. So we're not incurring additional costs in that sense. A normal ambulance call, um, I think on average, we get about $750 back uh, in billing revenue per ambulance call, um, which is why this additional A2 staffing um, or the additional A2 hours that I added in the schedule is offset by that additional revenue because we can anticipate that it's gonna more or less pay for itself. So that didn't answer your question. The 26 times two, so fifty-two dollars an hour in personnel, times times eight nine, for an eight-hour shift is times three for three days a week. Twelve hundred dollars a week, and you said it brings in about ten percent of the revenue. Yeah, our second ambulance covers about ten percent of our costs. Yep. So you said the second. <laughs> I'm just trying to do math, dude. Do. Huh? We don't have a motion. I, I'm actually going to suggest that we wait. So I want us to like understand Oof. everything, yeah. right? And then you don't have to come back. So <laughs> is, is my goal, right? So that we can ask you all the questions. And then I'm going to propose that we let the boo have their conversation, let the select board vote it. And then once we have a select board voted budget in front of us, then we vote it. Um, and then I guess if we had specific questions that we need yeah. to come back for you, we could call you or something. This stuff is easy for me to talk about. So I'm happy to talk about all day. Just don't ask me anything about any of the other budgets. Okay. Um, so the, it was $52 an hour times eight hours, but the, the second ambulance is from 7 a.m. No, it's nine to five. Nine to five. So it's eight hours. Okay. And it's five days a week? Three days a week. It's... <sighs> It's, it's such a moving, I like, this really needs like a, a chart or a graph or something. Yeah, yes, that full-time staff, that additional 500 hours a year in like full-time staffing availability, yes, covers that second ambulance um, basically three days a week. Um, oh, but it is five days. It's available five days. No, the no. other four days a week, that's seven, the other four days a week, is per diem staff. Okay. So they sign up for shifts a month in advance, they come in and they work um, and they man that second. So ambulance. I guess what I was asking is like, what's the cost for a year to have that ambulance going? The second ambulance. Uh, so it's nine to five, seven days a week. Times seven times 52. Uh, 9,500 well, bucks. 365. That can't be right. 26. Mm -hmm. oh, 54,000. That's right. I got 151. But okay. we'll 154, 760 is what 26. I got. Oh, but I was doing $53. Oh, okay. I got 151 for whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 150,000 bucks. 150, let's call it. 150, uh, we'll call it $150,000. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Yep. And we and you think that it brings in ten percent of the revenue, which would be like ninety thousand dollars for a hundred thousand uh, dollars. Yeah. Whatever that works out to. Yeah. Yeah, like ninety thousand. Okay. So, and that's just that's just salary. So on top of that is benefits and OPEB and whatever. Uh, yeah. Um, well, well, assuming it's full timers. Right. Yeah. Right. And it is okay. it isn't fully staffed. Um, by full timers, I think. The thing that costs less with the per diem, and if it brings in ten percent, if we're if we're anticipating six hundred and whatever in revenue, ten percent is sixty two thousand, or what so sixty three thousand nine hundred seventeen down for revenue. Yeah, is that no. Oh, oh no. no no you're looking at retained earnings plus yeah oh, oh, medical oh. service okay, fees where's the is, revenue it's right above that 625 625 you're right i, I did oh. I, it's like the oh, i didn't even see it like 62000 oh there it is okay oh yeah you're yeah right. so that's 62000 out of 150 that it costs us yeah it's like we're paying for what the service can do, right? Because just like any public safety agency, like the fire department, right? You're like, oh, we got to front all this money. We got to buy all this equipment. And we're going to sit around until somebody needs us, right? And the thing with ambulances is that, you know, I talked about that 90%, 10%. Once you staff an ambulance based on your geography and your location, you can cover X number of calls a year with that ambulance. And so they're like, they're chunks. So. One ambulance 24 seven covers 90% of our calls. I can't fully add a second ambulance, right? I'll have way too much capacity in the system. Right. So then I try to add it in just those eight hours um, to try to get cute, but there's always gonna be, we're always paying for what we can do, not what we're actually doing. And so it's always gonna cost more, right? To like fund the department than we're gonna get in revenue. But yeah, so 60, $62,000 in revenue is what I would, based on that 10% um, from that second ambulance. Um, okay. Do you have a feel for how many, like how often do you have overlapping calls? I can, I can pull charts like that. Yeah. Um, that's how we got to the the nine to five yeah. thing. Um, that's all data, um, and I can certainly pull a report frequency. I feel like actually, honestly, calls. I feel like that's more of a boo question than a yeah than a finance committee question. I mean, it's a decision of what level of service you want to provide. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do we like? That's just my proposal that we wait until after the board of oversight and the select board review this. Do you guys, are you guys okay with that? Or do you yes. want to go yeah. and vote this now? Yeah. Right. yeah. So we can revisit it Thursday okay. night, maybe. Huh? So we could maybe revisit it Thursday night or next yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. So um, I, just, any... I, I just quickly pulled up the actual revenues for fiscal 22, and that was 737,000. Wow. For fiscal year what? For fiscal 22, 737,446 was the well, actual revenue. 525. Is that billing plus? Uh, That's just what we received, period. Just billing. Mm -hmm. That's $200,000 overage, give or take a little bit. Budget 525. Extra that came in, yeah. 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 And we're expecting to see, I think Medicare, Medicaid just increased their uh, return rates as of January 1st, 6%. Um, so the percentage of that, which is Medicare, Medicaid is a 6% increase. There's definitely, as I said in the opening, that anticipated revenue is definitely low um, because we don't want to highball that and then end up, no, no, it, right? Just like with local receipts, yeah. you have to budget yeah. conservative yeah. Um, period. The other yeah. thing that we like to do is our, our and this year's different um, for reasons, but we like to fund that ambulance replacement out of that additional revenue, right? So we, we carve off, we shave off a little bit of that additional billing revenue every year, we put it aside. So when it comes time to buy the ambulance, we know we're gonna need to, we have that money on hand. Uh, and that's that's always how we've been like fiscally responsible for those types of things. Although this year you're intending to spend all but like a thousand bucks of it. 
Uh, yeah, we had some, there is, and this was a decision at the Board of Oversight, we had some uh, urgent capital uh, purchases that we need to make um, and to spend part of our retained earnings for those items prior to when we thought we were going to, which put us even further behind on the ambulance replacement. Um, the ambulance replacement went from $260,000 to $350,000 in a 12 month period. So um, we're not the only community facing this, but we, we found ourselves in a position where we thought we were gonna be able to buy the ambulance out of retained earnings, we couldn't. Um, and we had to make a, a tough decision to buy some other stuff. Um, we're looking at options like leasing an ambulance and things like that, um, but hence the Can other- Can you talk briefly budget. about the other stuff you have to buy and what generated that? Um, uh, yeah, need? so we have part of, the most expensive portion of being a uh, paramedic level service is that cardiac monitor. That's what allows us to read, interpret um, EKGs, uh, 12 leads, uh, diagnose heart attacks, and then administer um, electrical shock. I think we saw that uh, pretty profoundly on the football field recently of that football player who went down. Um, that was a cardiac monitor football player and paramedics who were able to, to save his life. That machine costs $50,000. Um, they have a 10 year life expectancy and ours were purchased from a grant uh, when we regionalized in 2014. Thank yes. you. Um, and the 10 year life expectancy is typical for medical equipment. They say, yeah, 10 years, you got to replace it. We recently learned that our devices are, while we can maintain them, we cannot repair them. Um, the electronic circuit boards inside of them were produced in a way that is toxic to the environment. So they changed their manufacturing process. It's totally different innards and the replacement parts are no longer available for our models. Um, so those two monitors that we have to keep both of our ambulances at the paramedic level service, if one breaks, we can no longer provide paramedic level care for one of our trucks. Um, that coupled with these monitors now being, um, I forget the exact period, but it's, it's over a year out on replacement if we were to order them today. Um, the decision was made at the Board of Oversight, oh, uh, let's purchase these monitors right now with the retained earnings that we have on hand. Let's get in the queue and let's make sure that we're not going to find ourselves in a situation where we can't provide the service and also we lack um, the revenue that we would get from providing a paramedic level service because we can bill at a higher level. Um, so that was that, um, that decision by the Board of Oversight. We can't bill, we cannot bill as a advanced level service either. So it's also re it affects our revenue stream. Not only does it affect our ability to um, help our residents, it also affects the ability to bill in our revenue stream. Right, right. And so the uh, that reduced the amount of retained earnings that we had available. We were we were anticipating of having enough money to buy an ambulance at two hundred and. $40,000, $250,000. Turns out that went up to three hundred and fifty dollars or sixty. dollars It was the last quote. And the turnaround on the ambulance is, I think, 700 days or something was the last quote I heard. Um, and so the discussion was, OK, normally we would say, we've got the money. We need to buy an ambulance. Um, we've got this handled. We found ourselves in a position where we can't do that. And the Board of Oversight voted, you know what? Let's put it out to the three towns and see if this is a value judgment for them, whether they want to fund their share of the difference. Um, and that is the capital request. So we have $100,000 to put towards that. Um, and then the difference is somewhere here. What the retainer is? 275,000 is what's left to cover from the three towns. Yeah. Uh, Deerfield's share is 143,000. 142,343. Yep. Um, yeah, and so, right, and the Board of Oversight, thank you, uh, mm -hmm. Brenda, which is comprised of representatives from three towns said, you know, some of us have free cash, some of us have capital stabilization, just put it out there. You know, we can't afford it on our own, just put it out there, let's let's see if they're, they're willing to purchase it. That third ambulance um, is, they say you're supposed to replace an ambulance after 10 years. This is a 2007 ambulance. 
Um, it is becoming uh, <laughs> prohibitively expensive to repair. Our next large expense uh, we're expecting to be like four or five thousand dollars. That's turbo EGR, um, and we get inspected annually by Department of Public Health. And the inspector was literally on a creeper under the thing last year, shocked that the frame wasn't cracked. And was I was ready to put an out of service notice on this thing. I'm shocked that it's it's still in service. Um, so it's really imperative that we replace this vehicle time. Um, with them being 700 days out, even if we placed an order tomorrow, uh, that, that ambulance is gonna be almost, or more than 20 years old potentially um, from its manufacture date. If we lose that so ambulance, we have, two? Three have three. We have three we have ambulances. Three. So in order to cover our calls, we need two ambulances, which means you need three, right? So one goes down for routine maintenance or service or needs to be decontaminated. You need that third ambulance. The third ambulance is also what we use for standby special events, football games, where we wanna have a paramedic and a defibrillator on site. That's all um, the second ambulance. And is also revenue generating. When it does those activities, we bill for that. Um, and so the board of oversight was like, well, we, we need to maintain this third ambulance. We need to, we need to replace it. Um, and that's, that's why we put it out. We still intend to put money aside every year. We're obviously having to increase that, uh, now that we know that these numbers are up, but our regular ambulance replacement schedule is right at four years, four to five years. Um, and our oldest ambulance is supposed to get replaced at four or excuse me, um, is supposed to get replaced. So our oldest ambulance would be 12 years old. Right, and our young youngest ambulance, our frontline ambulance, would never be older than four, and, and that's that's our plan there. Our other two ambulances that were recently purchased um, were purchased more close together. So once we replace this third ambulance, we will be able to go out more than four years, and so we'll have more time to uh, save those retained earnings as well. But um, the last thing I'm going to say on it, that third ambulance we inherited from Sunderland. Um, it was a 2007. <laughs> so it is not like the other ambulances, which means everything's in a different place. It's not uniform um, and it doesn't have the modern safety features. So that's part of the other reason why we want to get the new ambulance in. So for the uniformity and the safety of it. Oof. All of which sounds imminently reasonable. Any, uh, a question? Any questions? Just curious, 25 words or less. Oh, okay. When Jeez. you do a call, do you bill, like if you have to perform CPR on somebody, are you going to bill at a different rate than if you just had to put on an ACE bandage? If it's a basic level uh, call, just a Band-Aid, that's one rate. If it's a paramedic advanced level call, it is an additional rate. Um, and that that is what we were able to bill because we have paramedics and a cardiac monitor and things like that. And then there are certain in interventions, which we then also can bill for more money. So that base paramedic rate covers two medication administrations. If you get to a third, then you can bill more money, um, things like that. And then we also bill for miles. Um, so there's a rate for the distance traveled. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, uh, I just wanted to ask about the IV machines. Are, yes, are the those, IV pumps. Are, are, are those pumps? In, in the budget somewhere, I didn't, I didn't see those. So those got, uh, Brenda pointed out that the ask for the IV machines, the expense was under the capital right. purchase requirement. Yeah. Um, and so the recommendation was made that because they were being funded out of retained earnings anyway, let's place basically that expense in our regular budget and we'll increase the retained earnings being applied to the budget by that same amount. So that's what this new revision is that, yeah. Um, Brenda just put out. And it's just stuck into metal, medical supplies. We figured that was the best category for it. Yeah, so okay. you'll see, yeah, medical supplies went from 25 to 33. Um, $7,000 of that is oh, the so it's medical supplies. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, and maybe, uh, I don't know, is it possible they would come yet before the end of this fiscal year? Uh, yeah, I think uh, if we... Which would be great because then it would be in this year's budget and we'd have we'd be done with it. But yeah, agreed. Um, I my understanding is the turnaround on those are, are pretty swift. Great. Right here. Did you get it? Yeah, I, I think I gave one to everybody. It's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, the bottom line's the same. No, yeah. The cap. Oh, the capital. Okay. All right. Any other questions for Zoe? 
No, it seems sort of anticlimactic not to vote on anything when you're done, but thank you very much for oh. explaining all of this. No, my pleasure. Like and, I said, um, I love talking about this stuff because I'm like, I know yeah. it. So it's super easy for me. Um, and I'm always, always happy. Okay, okay. Actually, I do have one question. Yeah. <laughs> Spelling of Zoe. Z O E. No umlaut. No umlaut. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Okay, Jennifer. Jen, I on. think we're ready for you. <laughs> yeah. I want my pages away. <laughs> They're all, like, they're all worn, we're all down. worn out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're not gonna put them in place. Either that or all warmed up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, no, so we want to go to 541 5420. 541 5420. Yes, Santa expense. And then there's a her formula grant budget is right behind that, which is totally covered by the grant, but it is part of her operations. And then behind that, you had a memo from her um, giving all of the explanation of things, but. Yep, I know it's six pages, but I figured you might uh, get some of the information that you might need prior to. All righty. So how would you like to start? Do you wanna ask questions or do you want me to go over items? Go, why don't you go for it? Why don't you give us an introduction to your budget? All right. Um, so some of the items for 2023 changed. So it allowed some carry forward funds. Um, so I just want you to look at the uh, 5,400 expenses, which is the op main operations budget. You'll see that the SIG and formula grant covered where um, I had originally asked for funding for the outreach coordinator's position. Um, and so I moved some things around as to where expenditures occurred. Um, however, moving forward to fiscal 24, um, there's a higher increase there. But during the 2022 or 2023 fiscal year, um, the EOEA, which is the Executive Office of Elder Affairs, decided to utilize um, UMass's, I believe it was Phillips data pertaining to census data for 2020 um, information, which is how we receive funding for most of the seniors from the state. That's the formula fund, which is 291. And I'm gonna go back and forth between the two, not to confuse you, but because they do inter interplay here. Can I interject? Yeah. So for fiscal year 24, we are anticipating no SIG grant. So this year we've had 13,000 that we've been able to apply towards Chris's salary, which is why you're seeing an increase in these two budgets for that line item. You're taking my info away. I wasn't that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. I was just trying to get to the go. point. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was getting to the point about the increase in dollar amounts per senior with the census data uh, for 2020 oh, um, being utilized. Um, so it increased we increase the amount of individuals in our three in our three communities who are over the age of um, 60 years old, which is what the state provides. Currently, we receive $12 per senior um, in that. So we received an increase of um, 12,000, sorry, on the wrong page. We went from a total of, for all three communities, we went from a total of 22,000 in that grant to 39, almost 40,000. Yep, 39,756. We increased by $12,504 over all three communities. Um, this is the grant on this on the second page. But that's why in fiscal year 24, I'm asking for half of the outreach coordinator salary in the operations budget, where I had asked for a lesser amount last year for fiscal year 23. Um, so as you're looking at 24's budget, um, you'll see the two noted increases are going to be um, administrative office space and the operations or the outreach coordinator salary. Um, reason being is we do not have a utilizable space 
um, to have for administrative purposes. But the space that we rent in Sunderland not only holds administrative space, but also space to um, host events for up to 50 people. Um, we currently have a sitting area, a lending library, a computer lab, um, arts and crafts center, as well as a TV area. We are currently showing our 16, 19, the 1619 project on Thursdays there regularly. We also have staff housed there as well as a food pantry. Um, and we have ample dry storage to put our items um, as well. So we have use of that space 24 seven, 365. So mm -hmm. the limited amount of space that we utilize at the parish hall is where our main program activity occurs, you know, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for about 15 hours a week. Um, and that increased by $200 a month because their utilities increased. So instead of paying $1,000 a month for that space, we're now uh, paying $1,200 a month for that space. So those are the main costs that we have um, in there for the operations budget. We also have the carry forward funding because we, um, this is a special revenue fund. So any funds carry forward come to our next fiscal year. So for 24, we're carrying forward and utilizing $20,591 towards the, um, the original invoice. So Deerfield share would be what we're asking for is $76,527. Huh? $75,822, sorry. This is my revised version that I sent out to everybody. This was January and I sent it to you. Yeah, and then we revised it a couple times since then. I'm sorry. It's you have not sent it to me, revised? You and I talked about it. I, it oh. Okay. What you have in front of you is my version of it. Can I see what that is? Yeah, remember I gave you the indirect costs of 8,400. And I had 7,035. But you still have a lesser amount than what I have here. Right. I don't know what that is at this point because this is the last I have. <clears throat> Sorry. That went down. Right. Those were the numbers I gave you. A I just month printed or two off ago. the wrong version. Okay. Great. Then that, that then mine is correct. So what's the final total? 70, 75, 822. My apologies. So I know we discussed Sorry, this. I had to stay on my brain. So can you it's explain? okay? It's just different numbers because so basically the change in the version that I have versus what Brenda gave you is that I had a higher number on here for retirement purposes and a lower number for um the administrative overhead. So Brenda's version is correct. Those are the two data points. So the 75822. So that means I have to update because uh, we did this after Sunderland and I'm gonna have the lately tomorrow. So okay. Sorry. Um, so every all the other information, which is the data that I plugged in, is is accurate. My apologies, Jim. I'm gonna make sure I have one. Yeah, yeah, it's it's oh, sorry. Office. Yeah, I know it's Julie's show. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, Jim. <laughs> um, so um, the both the program space and admin office space is right. And yep. Okay. Um, all right, and just this is actually for other purposes. How large, um, how, much, how much office space do you um, Right now I share an office with both of my staff. We also have a dining services um, manager person from LifePath who utilizes space in that facility as well. So it houses four individuals um, and I don't have my own office with a door that I can close. Well, I'm wondering, you know, for the future, what yeah, flip it on the other hat, you know, whether 
we have here is about the right size. So I've, I, I got the email about that. And in my opinion, um, looking at all of the needs that we have and looking at the number of increased members in the past year, um, moving forward with if we had a different space, we would attract more people, I'd say probably 10,000 square feet. That would incorporate everything. That's basing it upon looking at um, other surrounding communities who have gone through the same similar change. So can you talk about how many people you do have? Yes, I can. So if you look at the memo that I provided to you on page two, um, we had an increase in membership last year. We increased membership during calendar year 22 by 93 members. In January 23 alone, I indicated we had increased membership by 16. Um, the accurate number is actually 14. Two of those 16 <laughs> had actually been previous members, but they were just starting to come and be more active. Um, in February and in March, we've increased by another six individuals. So um, we've, looking at through January 25 of 2023, we, were having, we had about 319 active individuals during calendar year 20, or during 22. So 319 different people. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's all three communities? Or? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, new members, we have 27 new members from Sunderland, 15 new members from Waitley, 20 new, seven new members are from non-South County towns, including Greenfield, Conway, um, Hadley, East Hampton, just to name a few communities. Okay. And then you were talking about the grant. So the formula fund grant um, mm -hmm. is a grant that we receive annually from the uh, Commonwealth and it's through the EOEA, and it's based on the number of seniors that reside in the community based on the ages of 60 plus. Um, so that number has increased substantially in our three communities. Um, as I mentioned before, there, you know, we increased about $12,000, $12,504 um, already for fiscal year 23 that we were not um, counting on. And Right now, MCOA, which is the Mass Council on Aging, is trying to push uh, Governor Healy to increase that dollar amount to fourteen dollars per senior. But you know that's that's in the governor's budget as to whether or not it will uh, sustain through legislature. You know, is another um, so basing it on the twelve dollars per senior. So that that fully funds. And so that's not any funds that the towns have to pay. It's allotted based on the town's census. So Brenda sends out an invoice to them each quarter that the money gets transferred over to the communities and we get that money to run this budget. So we increased going from $27,252 to $39,756. So with that money will really help fund, will be the outreach coordinators, the other funding of, his, of the salary for that individual. Um, during this fiscal year, we did increase um, our outreach coordinator from 15 to 19 and a half hours to 35 hours. So this individual is now full-time um, through approval through the Board of Oversight, the select board of Deerfield, because they're the hiring authority, because we have an IMA with the other uh, two towns. Um, so, and it fully funds our program assistance position. Um, it also covers that individual's Medicare costs, their longevity pay, um, we are, I tried to move funds from miscellaneous program costs into defined areas because I think what happened um, prior to me starting here is a lot of things were just up in the air. There was no definitive category as to where people were putting things in. And when I came on board and seeing the actual expenses, I was able to um, ascertain what category and to kind of more. Um, specify where these expenditures come from. Um, Thanks. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, it, it, it helps you get your mind around it, I guess. Yeah. yeah. But the one thing that I'd like to share is that we have increased participation of those 319 members from averaging 30 people coming per program day per month to um, Let's see, what are we at? We're at about 70 right now, 70 people who come 
on program days. We've added programming that they like, um, that they enjoy, and you know, it, it, the seniors really they like the programming. Um, so we've been able to change that and increase the participation, which was a driving factor in asking for outreach coordinator to um, increase their hours. She's really done an amazing job. The grants that you've gotten to have been yep. phenomenal. All the, all the grants have been way more than have, has been done in the past. So in addition to the formula fund grant and the service incentive grant, which is funding um, the outreach coordinator salary this fiscal year, um, the SIG grant is not guaranteed for next year. Only 18 communities received that directly from the state. It was just something from EOEA um, to help fund certain communities. I don't know what the selection process was at the time, but for fiscal year 24, it's already been determined it's going to be competitive grants. Um, so looking at that, um, I also reached out and, and did grant um, applications for Life Path. If you look at page five of the memo that I forwarded or sent out, um, the Life Path grants were $11,720. 9,000 of that was for exercise programs. Um, and then we received $2,720 towards um, three other programs. We're doing a writing workshop starting in, uh, in May. We're doing, we've already purchased binoculars for our birding program. That's really successful. Um, we're doing creative cooking. It's basically to take our food items we receive each month from the food truck distribution through the Food Bank of Western Mass and their partnership with the Turner, um, Turner Falls Survival Center is to come up with creative items to make for seniors, give them um, you know, recipe books, et cetera, so that they can try the recipes at home. And I'm also partnering with FCAT to be able to broadcast that on television. So if the seniors you know, who are homebound, who may receive some of these items, aren't able to come to center, um, they can access it as well. So that was an, and also we also received um, additional funds during fiscal year 22, we received $4,800 from the Fred uh, G. Wells grant um, from Greenfield Savings, as well as this fiscal year for $4,600, which has helped defray the costs for multiple exercise classes through um, our chair yoga, as well as uh, healthy bones and balance um, in Tai Chi. And all of those attendance have um, gone up quite a bit. We also you said you asked the people who go to the class to donate. Is that what this means? Yep. So, so with the donation. Title Three grants, one of the things that we are required to do is to put out a you know a donation container so anyone can make a donation if they would like to. For Tai Chi, we recently started charging a nominal fee of a dollar per class, just like seated dance. Um, you know, the seniors are feeling the pinch in their pocketbooks, and unfortunately, we don't have the health club close by here, the closest one would be Greenfield. And then you have private ones, you know, in Northampton, Hadley and Amherst. And then you have um, the other Y down in Northampton as well. So some people have, don't have the transportation, et cetera. So we're able to, um, you know, offer those programs close for a nominal fee. It really helps reduce isolation and loneliness. And it's also giving them something to do so their physical ability doesn't decline. Um, which is, you know, one of the things in the needs assessment that we had conducted from UMass was one of the uh, top items that seniors in the community wanted to see was um, an increase in exercise programs. So how are these grants administered? Like who does all the paperwork associated with the grant? I do. Do you? Yes. Okay. And all the reporting and everything that has to go on? Yep. That is all me. No, you know why Chris's hours have increased. <laughs> yes, because um, the Life Path grants, as well as, uh, oh, one of the other things mentioned in here, and in a way that we also have started to bring income in, is a partnership through the Department of Transitional Assistance and SNAP. Um, are all, I don't know if everyone's familiar with what SNAP is. It used to be known as the Food Stamp Program. Um, it basically, we are able to provide services that we had already been providing to seniors, but we're getting reimbursed for those expenses. So this fiscal year, or this first quarter, 
Um, I think we're supposed to, if approved through all the paperwork and the reports that we submitted, around $548 minus a 5% fee that goes to UMass for their administrative uh, administration of what we're doing. Um, so we'll get that money in and it goes towards our rent, our salary, et cetera. So um, I'm also doing those reports as well. And each of those, the grants and the SNAP partnership are done quarterly, or, or excuse me, um, yeah, quarterly. And since much of the SNAP money is being spent out of the operations fund, we've created a revenue number in there. So it just kind of supports, helps support the budget for the towns. Yep. So that that income coming in will fluctuate based on how many individuals in the community that we provide SNAP assistance for. And that includes marketing our SNAP program, as well as assisting um, anyone who comes in to do that. And we have opened it up to anyone in the community who wants to service because um, we want to make sure that there's equitable access in the community, not just for those over, you know, 60 plus. Because basically that partnership defrays any additional costs we may, you know, have. Um, so you can provide like help people get signed up for it and everything, regardless of how old they are. They could be 30. Yep. They and, could be, okay. they could be 18 and come in and we'll offer that support. Nice. Same with our food pantry, because, you know, we, we're, we're providing a service to the community and there aren't a lot of places locally that people can walk to, to get that support. Um, the closest food pantry other than us would be the Amherst Survival Center, which, you know, if you live in Deerfield or Waitley, you may not have bus transportation based on how everything runs. So we're, um, we're working to reduce that um, or to increase that access. We're also actually, um, a potential another grant source that we're working on is a partnership with FERCOG. They're addressing, um, we're currently in the process of that. They did a questionnaire as well to determine a certain needs within the communities all in Franklin County. So I've been working with Rachel Stoller um, and we're going to be reaching out to members within the communities of, you know, all of South County, Waitley, Deerfield, um, and Sunderland to have them come in and do work groups to focus on transportation and food insecurity. And um, we're starting that, I believe our first meeting will be in April. Um, so we're working behind the scenes to get that started, but we'll also get be able to get some grant funds to offset the meeting space, which is our you know location in Sunderland, as well as staff salary towards that. So the reason I'm bringing this up is because the needs assessment that we received through UMass got a response from over 1300 individuals within the community. I think it was like 36%, which is, I guess, unheard of normally yeah, yeah. when you get responses like that. Um, so we're going to be able to address those needs that we were looking at addressing anyways, but have some help for up to three years with um, potential grant funds to reimburse us for those hours we're spending. So I'm looking for other revenue sources, but unfortunately, you know, we can't solicit for donations and things like that. Um, specifically and, and stuff. I've also been dipping into our grant, our um, gift account. People talk about our gift account. So that helps to sometimes offset some of the expenses we pay on a regular basis. Um, but those are all donations and um, you can't always rely on that either. Anybody have questions? You had your hand up sort of earlier. Right? Okay. We need a motion. We do right. need a motion. I'll make a motion to approve senior center expense count 541-5420 for a Deerfield share of $75,822. We have a second. second. All right. Good. Now we're official. Now we can talk about it after all that. Um, Anybody else have questions for anything? So the vehicle repairs, is that something new? No, um, what we did was we moved stuff around from the previous fiscal year, it was under vehicle expenses. And so we kind of moved it under because it was more of a um, maintenance. Oh, I see, it just, yeah. it was 2109, that's got it. 
Yeah, I moved it around. Sorry. Okay. It increased no. it a little bit. And gave it a special line item. Yeah. So she could keep track of it better. Yep. So that way when you know we spend money on gas, which is basically what we've been spending it on. And then when we get registration and you know the inspection sticker and things like that, we'll be able to um, be able to pinpoint it more easily. So I have a quick question. Are you still going to apply for the SIG grant? Yes, that's okay. our intent. I thought so. Um, I just submitted another Wells grant um, that was not supposed to be available, but uh, they came out in Jan January, end of December, January, saying that they were going to be offering it again, but this was more in-depth information. So I took all your reports and all the other stuff and dropped it off at the post office today. Great. So if we get that, that could potentially be another um, $4,600 or so, somewhere around there, depending on what they offer. However, that's not included in here because it wasn't included previously. And if we don't receive that, more than likely we'll have to defer the costs to the seniors who participate in those classes because we can't fully fund um, those types of those types of uh, classes regularly. That's why I went for the grant information before. So the SIG grant last year, you got thirteen thousand one hundred thirty-five dollars and five cents. <laughs> yeah, the five cents is important. They expect you to. <laughs> Yep. And we have, and we have utilized that totally. So at the end of this month, when I get my reports, I will submit for reimbursement and that will be taken care of for this fiscal year. So right now we'll be using the formula fund to pay for our outreach coordinator. And then if we, you know, we need to, we'll go over to the operations budget, but that's not going to change our line item for fiscal year 23. So. So just to make sure I'm following, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> you're going to apply for the SIG grant. You have already applied for the SIG grant. If it comes in, that will enable you to have more classes or something, expand your, no. your offerings. Sorry, I gave too much information. SIG grant will not be available to be applied for until t uh, probably later this fiscal 23. Okay. Um, I applied for an additional Wells grant, which oh, oh, oh. was not okay. anticipated. That's the 4,600. Yes. Right. I was wondering why you Sorry. said 4,600 and <laughs> wondering why it came down so much. So got it. So you're going to apply for the SIG grant. There's not any real expectation that you'll receive it is what you said. I don't know. Instead of it being 18 communities, it will be available to 351 communities to apply for. So yeah. it's hit or miss Competition pretty okay. much. Okay. Go ahead. Just curious, um, the newsletter, which is wonderful. What's the um, $2,500 budget expenses and new items? Um, so let's see. The reason being is because we have increased membership. We have increased demand for copies. Uh, last month I printed off, I think 250. But to save us funds, what we've decided to do is to put it out in a, a bi-monthly edition. So last month was April, was, uh, March and April's edition, we are saving money. We're saving, um, throw a calculator. Oh. Sorry. We're saving around $1,000 this year by going to bi monthly in postage. Um, so, but the printing cost is something that needs to be noted because previously it wasn't being tracked correctly. Um, so I think the expense was there. It just wasn't fully captured. So I think it was in a miscellaneous category. So what I, you know, like I mentioned before, trying to be specific as to where the dollars are going, but we actually got a phone call. We started taking some seniors off the list. We haven't seen in a few years. I received a phone call today from someone who hasn't been there actively since 2017, wondering why she's no longer getting a newsletter. Um, so why, one of the things that we're looking at is we're now asking folks to, um, if they could get an email edition and be okay with that, can they sign up? And they're doing that. But there's only certain people who can really do that because of vision reasons. They don't have a printer and they really um, don't always know how to navigate or have an issue sometimes with the technology. Thank you. You're welcome. So this has gone up from last year, 129,000, 251,000. Total 
and that's with a 20,000 carry forward. So most of that seems, I'm just trying to figure out where that is. A lot of it is the outreach person going from whatever she was, 12 hours to 35 hours. Um, actually, they were from 15 hours to 19 and a half hours during this fiscal year to 35 hours. So yes, for some of that. Um, sorry, I have it. And then your the rent amount. went up a little bit. Uh, the rent went up some, but then we also got a new space totally, which was $1,800. Yeah. yeah. And it, yeah, but it, it's, we didn't it's listed have it. down here because you had the, um, yep. The outreach coordinator salary in here, and then you got SIG grant. So you offset that and yes. then put it yeah. in, but that, so that's listed. So that's part of the 129,000, right? Yes. And the, the admin office, we didn't have it for a full year for fiscal 23. So fiscal 24 is the full year of that. Okay. Yeah. So um, I got a question. Um, you have a 1200 for snow removal. Yes. Previous. Did someone would do that? Nope. Why not? It's right there. <laughs> That'd be nice. Um, <laughs> no. So Previously, if you look at the previous fiscal years, yes. Deerfield actually charged, or, or I believe there was a private company, there was a private company that did it, and then the last couple of years, the DPW did it, but then in, um, when we moved over, we had to do that because it's a private entity um, or private location. <laughs> but yeah, and um, this is probably an accurate representation of what we've paid this this year so far. I think um, for next year, I mean, you know, the way things are going with winter, we really didn't see much until a week. Um, so we're doing okay with that. I think if I need to move stuff around at some point, you know, potentially, but um, you have to be prepared because we need to get in and out of our building. And I'm shoveling myself no but myself and, and and our staff are also shoveling the stairs and the big ramp in the back so we're taking that on as well aerobic. you're welcome good exercise yeah. all right any other questions discussion no Allie is not there anymore. So we can just vote. Last we don't have to do lost the internet for a while. Yeah, she disappeared when that happened. Yeah. Um, so we can just vote. So any further discussion or questions? No. So we have a motion and a second for senior center expense at $75,822. Um, all those in favor? Aye. All right, that passes five zero zero. Okay, great. The, Thank um, you. We really need to. I mean, this rent. It would be nice if we could find a space and um, from your lips that to into God's the town. ears, huh? From your lips to God's ears. <laughs> well, that's that's a useful argument for spending money to fix up one of the buildings we already own. Yeah. Like, nope. Yeah. Um, I think it's in it's in process. I know there's yeah. Different I mean, there's a lot things. of activity. There's a lot of effort going on. It's just we need yeah. to oh get over that hump. Do we need you, to vote anything on the formula better. grant, or is that just oh, information? No, that's oh, just that's informational purposes. There's okay. no um, approval. It's funds I get Fine. specifically to spend at my discretion. Okay. From the state, which is. All righty. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thanks for being so patient. No worries. I know government. So it's like, um, you don't have to stick around for this, but I'm, I'm just looking at it. So it's 319 different people and there's 3,300 ish total people. If I divided right the 39,000 by whatever. So that's maybe 10%, a little less than 10% are actively using the, um, senior no, we're center. actually getting about 70 people per, per program day. So if you, is that what you're asking? No, no. You said there's 319 different people. Yes. That have been contacted. And if no, you they, look at yep, the grant. They come at least once, once a year, at least. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's 319 people yep. and there's 300, there's 3,300 total seniors in the three towns. 
oh. if you take the grant divided by the twelve. Grant divided by twelve. Okay, right. So, so you, you're um, getting maybe you're you're face to face contacting maybe ten percent. Except for that, Waitley gets the minimum. So nope. They increased. Oh, they did. They went over. Everyone they... increased over the bare minimum that Massachusetts was providing to um, each oh, yeah. community was six thousand so dollars. But the number, um, of, number of people. But this year it went up, so everybody's actually contributing more than just the bare minimum um, because the population is aging, and unfortunately, the state doesn't increase that information or increase that dollar amount every year. So say you know next year we get another. 400 people who hit that, you know, we got to wait till that 10 year marker. So we, we've been playing, we've been receiving funds based on 2010 data um, since probably, I'm going to say if they go with a year or two, you know, since at least 2011, 2012, and we're, you know, in 2023, and we just got this increase um, at the end of December or in December, I believe. So mm -hmm. it's, um, yeah. Welcome. It's nice okay. to have the extra money, um, but unfortunately it, it takes a while to get it. Yeah. So, all right, thanks, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks for doing a nice job here. Thank you, John. Oh, yeah, sorry. All right, Ken, you're up. So who's next? Are you doing Tritown? Yeah, and swim okay. program both. Muted. Right, you're muted. Jeez. There you go. <laughs> Some technology here. <clears throat> See count numbers. Please. I have no idea. So uh six three zero what fifty four hundred is uh the sw summer swim program and I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, it's six, six three zero six three oh fifty four hundred. Should we start with that one, Ken? That's the easy one. Sure. It, okay. well, hopefully it's the easy one. Um, <laughs> we've, uh, we're proposing the same amount of money this year as last year, or um, as the current fiscal year for fiscal 24. We did not run a swim program in our first year back in operation. So we, what we're doing is basing our um, projections off of what transpired in previous years. Uh, the numbers you have there show a head instructor and a second instructor at 200 hours, um, 200 hours would represent approximately 20 hours a week for 10 weeks. And I don't think the swim program will run for all 10 weeks and I don't think it will run for 20 hours, but uh, we put those hours in just to be, be safe. So that <clears throat> um, generates an amount of money. We have a revolving fund, which I believe is what Brenda has used to offset down below about $3,240. Yes. So that the net becomes 6,310 mm -hmm. uh, for the, that particular program. The revolving um, fund is what collects the revenues from the SWIM program. Correct. And there were many years that we didn't use any of it. I think right at this point, there's like $11,794 or something like that that's in there. So we thought we could use some of that each year towards the SWIM program and kind of keep it a little more consistent level. But it's not in the budget. There's a negative. Right. It, we That's would, what the negative is. We would be applying the salaries to that revenue fund instead of Correct. instead of here. So that so they're. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong. Yeah. So you're right. showing an offset, and we right. haven't actually right. had a swim program since 2018. So right. it's been a long time since we've had one. I, what's the likelihood that we would, Ken? Um, well, we have an instructor, at least one instructor identified, and um, she's quite anxious to get a program up and running. So we're we're very optimistic that we'll be able to get a swim program together. Great. Uh, I have, having no history to draw on since 2018, I couldn't project any kind of revenues. Uh, we haven't even established what the costs will be to the participants. Uh, so it's going to take a little bit of time and uh, a little bit more effort as we go through the spring here to, to uh, put the th put the program in place and hopefully we'll get two or three sessions worth of uh, swim program over the course of the summer. Sounds great. 
Go ahead, John. Deerfield pays 100%? Why? Yes. This is, this is Deerfield's it's, program. It's a Deerfield program Call only. Deerfield program. Do other communities use, participate in the program? I, if they do, they pay. Mm -hmm. And the Deerfield participants don't pay? No, the Deerfield residents pay as well. That's the way I understand. It. Yes, all re all participants would pay, and um, you know, basically, we're we're running a program. So we, as I said, we we're just getting into this. We didn't have it last year, and I uh, I don't have a lot of specific information for you in terms of revenue. <clears throat> Seems like the River Valley Day Camp might have used the swim program too in the past. I'm not sure, but. I'm not sure if they had uh, students or uh, campers that participated in the swim program or not. I, I couldn't say that. I don't know. All right. I was going to ask how many kids participate, but it hasn't happened since 2018, <laughs> so I'm not even going to ask. Yeah, it, it seemed <laughs> like the it seemed like the yearly out. revenues when it was working was somewhere between 1,400 and 1,600 a year. So it wasn't a huge money maker. Um, maybe I'm maybe, just wondering how many kids actually. Yeah, and I I don't um, know what that boils down classes, to. But, yeah. Okay. I can only say that my my children many years ago <laughs> participated in the program. And I don't remember how many kids were, were participating then. I remember there being about 10 kids with me. When I learned how to swim there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was a decent handful of kids there. Yeah, yeah I, I think the classes tended to be about 10, 10 or 15, 10 to 15 kids maximum. Sounds about right. And yeah, I think we're so. also limited in the number we can have based on the yeah. number of lifeguards or number of instructors you have, so. <clears throat> It seems like a worthwhile program and it doesn't get spent if um, you don't have the class. So. That's correct. So I would anticipate the 6,310 from this year will be coming back to the town. <laughs> I, I, I hope you have the program. Yeah, I hope so too. Uh, we did. I move that the committee recommend the sum of 6,310 for the summer spring program. Second. Sorry. Go ahead, you can have it. Sorry. <laughs> Very glad. Any discussion? Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. That's unanimous 400. All right. All right. Next. Very, yep. Very next one is 630 5410, and that is Tri Town Beach for 41,022. And if, you, if you've got your sheets in front of you, you'll see that this is a Fairly significant increase over this year's request, or not request, but this year's budget of 27,220 represents about a 51 or 50, yeah, about a 51% increase in the requests. Um, the reasons for this are twofold. One is that there's a um, $6,000 um, permitting fee that we're going to be, or permitting consultation fee that we're going to be paying to continue work on the control of the vegetation that's uh, taking over the pond. And what we've done is we've completed an initial survey of the pond and a an recommended management plan, but the pond has a an identified endangered vegetative species in it called the uh, dwarf bulrush. And because of that, it's a national heritage environmental, environmentally protected site. And we have to go through what the National Heritage Environmental uh, Commission or something within the state to get permitting to control the rest of the vegetation in the pond and, and protect the endangered species. So, we have to do that and the permitting is estimated initially at about six thousand dollars we're hoping it will be less um it's all dependent on how negotiations go am i losing you no. just the top part okay something happened <laughs> yeah you're a little fuzzy um, there but we could hear you right and the other piece to that is that last year when we budgeted we were the initial budget called for a lifeguard salary of about $17 an hour. And when we started trying to hire lifeguards last year, we couldn't get anyone under 20. 
<laughs> so, so the, um, the salaries have gone up quite a bit and we're trying to staff uh, two, two lifeguards per day at the facility. <clears throat> if you have a raft in the water, you have to have a guard permanently stationed on the raft. You also have to have one on the beach. So we have to have two guards if we're going to have a raft. Um, <clears throat> so that's why uh, there's a significant increase there. Um, if you look up, you'll see the total expenses of $57,219. Uh, we also have expenses. I mean, we also have revenues that we generate through permits. Let me look real quickly. I can, uh, last year we sold about a hundred and, God, just have to find it. <clears throat> oh, draft budget. Last year we sold uh, approximately 115 or 110 passes. Uh, and th of those passes, a number of them were uh, senior passes, which cost uh, $25, I think. Uh, 60 something of them were senior passes. And uh, the, the remainder were uh, $50 passes. Then we also have out of town passes that come in at $100 each. We sold 35 of those last year. Day passes, uh, $20 a day. We sold about 20 of those. Um, and then we had revenue that comes in from the River Dal Valley Day program, the camp program. And there's a field to the south of the beach that rents each year for about $1,100. Uh, so for the coming year, we're anticipating gate receipts of about $12,760. Uh, and <clears throat> that gets applied. You'll, you'll see the list of expenses, but that's where the numbers come <laughs> from. Uh, they get applied again. <clears throat> 12,760 against the uh, 11,295, I think. Uh, <clears throat> and can't remember. It, I didn't catch it, Ken, but did you point out that Waitley is paying half of the cost of that 6,000? I did not. Uh, Waitley pays 23% of the total expenses, but for the um, $6,000 study, uh, <clears throat> the Waitley representatives agreed that they should pay 50% of that cost. So 50% of that $6,000 or $3,000 is, is being paid by um, Waitley. So. <clears throat> Is there any participation from the third town? The third town does not. It, it's a misnomer at this point in time. Tritown Beach was originally supposed to be Waitley, Sunderland, and Deerfield. Sunderland has had opted many, 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 many years ago not to participate, but the name Tritown Beach remained because it's uh, it was created essentially through a legislative act. <laughs> um, we have outreach going to Sunderland. We had it last year and they expressed interest, but it was too late in the season. I have not heard of the progress that our representative uh, that was reaching out to Sunderland has made. I'm not highly, given the fact I haven't heard anything, I'm not anticipating that they'd be participating again this year. Uh, we're trying to get them back, trying to get them on board, but it's not happening yet. <clears throat> Question. Go ahead. Yeah, John. Okay, what's the, is the gatekeeper simply somebody that's at the gate to make sure nobody sneaks in, or the gatekeeper is there what's to the, yes to do? to monitor people Ooh. coming in. Pardon, monitor. Yes. Why did it double? It's essentially doubling almost, so pretty close to double what it was in earlier years. Why? Uh, the number of hours, I believe, if I remember correctly. Are they the ones that also collect the money? They also collect the money. Okay. They, they collect the money, they monitor people coming in, they do some uh, you know cleaning of the beach and uh, work around the <clears throat> bathhouse areas. 
Um, but we try and have someone there eight hours a day just to make sure. So you mean it used to be four hours a day? Um, I can't. I can't. I honestly can't remember what I budgeted last year uh, for I, those. I, I want to say maybe 150 hours a piece at one point in time. That's that's my recollection. But whether right. that was last year or, or a few <laughs> years before that. Yeah. Uh, I think what look. would happen in is just before when my kids were taking lessons, if it was like a couple hours to closing time, the they wouldn't be collecting. The person right. would be off. And yeah. so this, I think this is... There is someone at the gate the entire most the entire time. That's what we're trying to do, yes. And there was someone generally at the gate most of last summer. So last year when we talked about this, there was discussion about making that person actually another lifeguard that would rotate through so the lifeguards would get a little break. Is that if it if it's possible to find someone with lifeguard certification, then we're paying them lifeguard wages. Um, right. and, uh, it, it, that did not happen last summer. We were like, there were times last summer when we had no lifeguards on duty and would put up signs that said no lifeguards on duty, swim at your own risk. Um, we are fortunate that most of that staff appears to be coming back this year. And we think we have a line on being fully staffed. Nice. <clears throat> That's hard to do. Lifeguards are hard to come by if you want to be. Absolutely. <clears throat> it's a fun job. I was a lifeguard as a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a vacancy. I was going to say, maybe uh, <laughs> I should just start up and go, go back to it and put the hat back on. Yeah. You could fall here. Yeah, I'll need a sunscreen and a whistle. Yeah. I should I should point out that this budget, and I, I didn't point it out before, but this budget also includes a lifeguard supervisor. Um, we didn't technically have a lifeguard supervisor last year. We hired a an overall supervisor midway through midway through the season because it was just very evident we needed someone to be looking out for things. So uh, this would be intended to to fill that fill that void and help us out with uh, better supervision as opposed to uh, one of our commissioners just did an unbelievable amount of work last summer to help mm. keep the keep the program going scheduling you know scheduling staff and being down there most every day it was uh quite quite a lot of effort she put in she's sorry she couldn't be here tonight so it's easy to get burnt out yes yeah. it would be very easy <clears throat> so how does the supervisor differ from the senior lifeguard the the senior lifeguard would just be um the senior lifeguard isn't a, a relevant position it's just one that used to be it's one that used to be it's not applicable anymore there's an na in the far column if you look so essentially it is the senior lifeguard okay do you have a feel for what percentage of the people approximately who go are the river valley day camp well the river river valley day camp is there four days a week in the afternoons um, they've reached out to us to, to um, see if they could change the way they utilize the beach a little bit this coming year. Um, last year, we had trouble supplying them with enough lifeguards for the number of children they were bringing. Um, and so this coming year, they're, they're proposing smaller groups come uh, on the four days, uh, making it possible for us to just staff with two lifeguards. At times we had to have three life or try to have three lifeguards there and we couldn't necessarily accommodate that. Um, so they come in on a regular program and they have counselors with them that help with the supervision of the, of the children. Um, and uh, I don't, you know, they're, yes, they're big utilizers of the space. Um, but I, I don't have a, the percentage, I couldn't tell you. So if they shift it so that you only need, I guess what I'm wondering is whether you would have the lifeguards there anyway, and um, are, they, are they costing you extra? Is, does River Valley Day Camp cost you extra, or is that a service that you would be providing? I'm not 
being articulate at all. Do you see what I mean? That's a, I understand what I think I understand what you're trying to ask. Um, they don't they don't cost us anything extra. The effort, as I said, is to try and have two lifeguards at all time. Otherwise, the raft Has that would be on the premises okay. would have to be posted off off limits um, when there's only one lifeguard on duty. And if we're, you know, if we're again short, relatively short staffed or borderline short staffed, there will be there might be times that the the beach would be no lifeguard on duty. Swim at your own risk. <clears throat> What are the what? What's your season? June. So, so the plan is for this year is for 83 days. Uh, we are planning to try and open Memorial Day weekend for the three day weekend, and then uh, just weekends for the first three weeks of June, and then ten weeks at seven days a week. What are the hours? Uh, it's eight hours a day. I think it's 10 to 6. Doesn't, the math doesn't work out for gatekeepers anyway. It's because it's gatekeeper plus 184 weekend. hours. It's weekends plus gatekeeper weekends. There's gatekeeper and weekend gatekeepers. Yeah, the, well, the weekend gatekeepers. I just ran the numbers again. because 23 days. What's that? That's 23 days, I, which is that's 20. Is that right? Oh, the the other piece to this 29 ish. I think what you're looking for, John, um, part of the salaries come in June, which is the current fiscal year. Uh, I was going through that I, next June on there, too, though, right? What's that? If you do the same thing next year, we should have next June on here. So it should be kind of a wash. Yes, I guess it should be. You're right. Um, I, I, I'm trying, I can't, I, <laughs> I did this back in January and I've been trying to look at my logic all day today or just this evening before this meeting started. Um, what I did was I created a, um, you know, a spreadsheet that had the hours broken out, John, to, to get to these numbers. And um, I, I can't honestly answer your question. <laughs> it looks to me, I definitely could be wrong, but you might have too many hours in here. But it's um, open. Just a second, let me see. Oh, if I, huh? Let me, I've got one. It's like 83 and a half days. I I added up the lifeguards. Where did I write that down? <laughs> or where did I compute it? One or the other. Was he saying it was open June to he said 83 days total. Memorial Day weekend, yeah. weekends there, only for three weeks in June, and then 10 weeks sorry. straight. So five days, 10, and then seven days. Seven days. Seven days. Seven days. Seven days. Seven Just bear with me a minute. I think I can find how I came to the numbers. Not that it matters, but I keep hearing city clicking like somebody's trying to get in. I get 15 weekends if I get it right. So 15 weekends times two days times eight hours. It's 240. Actually, it looks low. Now that I look at it. <laughs> it's a, it, it is a little bit low, and I think the um, adjustment I made was for the um, the hours that would be paid in June. But as Julie just pointed out, of course, I'm forgetting the hours for next year in June, so it should be a wash. Um, 
I don't know if that's for a second. Weekend gate. Hmm? Is it what changed in the budget or? No, nah, I don't think so. So this went up a bunch last. Well, if you discount, like if you ignore the years it was closed or whatever. It, it, we have to ignore them. Essentially $10,000 last year and then another 13,000 this year. So we've mm -hmm. had two hefty increases in a row. But I guess that's the... Um, yeah, all right. It's the environmental stuff that we have to deal with. Plus, they're seeing the same problem everybody else is with salaries. And it's, it's all lot, salary, right? Yeah, more, pretty much. Yeah, a lot more hours for lifeguards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we're trying to get the full staffing. Full, full coverage. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm looking at all these expenses here, but those you used to just take from revenues and we didn't see them. Is that why they're here all of a sudden, but they didn't used to be? I worked off of a spreadsheet that I was given. So um, I think the um, administrative and operating expenses paid for revenue have always been on this particular budget. Is that what you're asking? I think because we still had money left in those old um, bank accounts that we yes. moved into this fund that actually covered those kind of costs for fiscal 23. Mm -hmm. So it's right that you would, you would budget for those for fiscal 24. Um, Ken, I am a little concerned that you're going to run out of money before the end of June. So I just want to make sure right. when you're collecting that the monies get to the town hall as soon as possible and particularly before the end of june <laughs> correct <laughs> and that you put off any expenses that you can uh, i i don't disagree um i did a quick run i thought i saw that we had about fifty two hundred dollars in january fifty four hundred dollars left in approximately in january um, yeah and and there's there's a little uh, I, I need to visit with you at some point about some of the uh, bills that have been coming in. Um, I'll, I'll give you a ring sometime. But yeah, I, I reached out to Patty today. Um, Carolyn had talked to me last week at a CIPC meeting or after a CIPC meeting about some of the things that are going on. And we just need to figure out a system. Yes, I, I would agree. I think we need to keep on top of the invoices that we get because I think it looks bad on the town of Deerfield when things aren't paid on a timely in a timely Correct. manner. Um, and and no offense to Patty as she's got she's got a million things on her plate, but there has to be a different system to get it done. Right. Um, so anyway, I wanted to visit with you a little bit about, about that, but that's that's not for tonight here. No, I, and I'll be out of town for most of the rest of this week. Um, I'll be back next week. I'll try and get down. We can Sounds chat. great. That would be great. Thank you. Yep, that would be wonderful. So. Um, and I will get you a, a new uh, revenue and expense summary for the end of March so that you, you can look at that again. Okay, good. And... Um, Yes, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I don't usually come in requesting 50% increases, but I, we, we were flying by the seat of our pants last year. We're at least flying by most of our pants this year. Um, <laughs> and, and I'll hope by the, by the third go around, the uh, budget will make more sense for people. So, did you raise good questions? I mean, I, I was running the hours again today, just because I figured that, that would be the big question. And my logic from January has escaped me at this point in time. I have to dig through three different spreadsheets to try and get, piece it back together and make sure I, why I did it, John. <clears throat> so when you look at the 110 passes or whatever it was that you sold last year, have you looked at the breakout <laughs> between me. Waitley and Deerfield? Um, we actually, we have Waitley, Deerfield, Hatfield, Sunderland, all had, um, 
people and I could go in, I've got minutes here somewhere that uh, tell me just a second. <clears throat> um, the interesting thing that we dealt with was last year, we decided that we would um, do a senior pass for 25 bucks as opposed to $50 for, <clears throat> for the uh, beach pass. Mm -hmm. And what we found was that uh, we had a lot of senior passes that seemed to have rather large families associated with them. <laughs> so, so we are not offering a senior pass in the coming year. We will be doing one, good. <laughs> one pass for one price. And I'm doing that to stall so I can try and find the numbers on the, uh, the towns. Passes, 43% for the town of Deerfield, 26% for Waitley. Interestingly, 16% of all passes were for Hatfield residents, and they pay something like $100 or $120 for a pass, and 8% for Sunderland. Wow. So, um, a pretty good, I mean, Deerfield wants to be the try, wants to be the try and try town, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, we've talked about it, and I think we should reach out to see if Hatfield wants to come in and we could always uh, uh, the thing is we we uh, are under the understanding that whoever we try to bring in we have to go I think it has to eventually go before the state legislature to uh, keep the um, agreement on the up and up um, so. and, and from your numbers it might warrant a new memora memorandum of understanding with a higher percentage cost for Waitley. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Cuz we're subsidizing all these other towns cuz we're paying yes. 75% and we have 43% of the yeah. yeah users. Yeah, that's uh, they they're, they they tend to semi draw a line in the sand and say, "Hey, it's our pond." <laughs> um okay, but we've <laughs> we've paid for a lot of the, we, you know, I'm sure we foot, you know, uh, assume the responsibility for the lion's share of the costs of the improvements to that pond. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a conversation to have very definitely. <clears throat> Seems like, you know, like two thirds would be a more appropriate number. Mm hmm. Uh, there was discussion last year about a whole bunch of improvements to the buildings and stuff. Did that happen? Um, or a year before, maybe it's two years ago. Um, last year, it, last summer, we had we had to do a lot of it. Ex we had to do extensive plumbing and electrical work to the building and grounds uh, to get them back up and running. Um, and we had a fair amount of yeah, I said plumbing work already. We did not get to address the exterior of the building, but we have cleaned the buildings up and uh, spent a lot of time getting the place ready to go. Uh, there would still be improvements that could be made, but the important thing to us right now is to try and get the vegetation under control and get all the proper permits in place and everything else to, to make that a, um, you know, make it a more enjoyable experience and then once we figure out how to get rid of the canadian geese we'll be even better off so <laughs> All right. uh, we don't have a motion yet let me like to make a motion I'll make a motion approve tight to try down beach expense count 630 for forty one thousand oh twenty two. the second i'll second that Any discussion? Any further? So I'd be interested, not right now, but maybe next year, I'll, we'll send you an email in advance with sort of numbers, like how many people do you see on an average day, something along those lines. I'll, I'll come up with a coherent question and send it to you before next year. I, I may be able to put a summary like that together in some manner, shape or form. I um, I don't know exactly what logs they kept, but I know something was kept 
of uh, it's I don't think it's a huge amount number of people there per day, but it's also the first year that we've been reopened and we're hoping yeah. to build uh, build a better experience that will bring people, you know, more people more consistently to the pond. So yeah, I have to say, I didn't know it had reopened. So maybe a little more promotion. Guess we did a good job promoting it. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Any further questions? No. Um, has been moved and seconded for Tri Town Beach at forty one thousand twenty two dollars. All those in favor? I guess I am. All right. Four that zero passes zero. four zero zero. Great. Thank you so much, Ken. Thank you, Ken. Well, thank you, and thank you for the questions. I'm sorry I didn't have as efficient yeah. answers as my predecessor. Um, I'm not a full-time yeah, employee, I guess. You did good. <laughs> okay. And th thanks to Patty, too, if you get a chance to talk to her. Oh, I will. Uh, believe me, she, she gets thanked regularly by me. She's, uh, <laughs> She's I'm, pretty, pretty amazing. I'm quite pleased that she came on board last last January because it certainly made things different. Yes. Uh, okay. All right. M Mark, I'll probably be remote on Thursday. Sounds good. Okay. See you then. I'm hoping to be remote. We'll see if I get clearance. I'm babysitting the grandkids, so I've got to juggle things around. So. All right. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Okay. Thank you all. Good night. Yep. Good see night. you. It's eight o'clock. Should we should we start to go through some of these miscellaneous ones that we've left, or you guys up for another twenty minutes? Can we do that? It's okay with me. I was planning on it. All right. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> so um, I scheduled a meeting for Thursday. It's going to be completely remote because this space will be occupied. You're going to be doing CIPC, so you'll miss at least part of the meeting. And then there's going to be a hearing. I think a Comcom but... com hearing later right? my yeah. goal is to get through all of the budgets by the end of the meeting next week the 28th which i think is tuesday maybe um and then at that point be able to have a discussion because i think we're going to be at the point we're going to be saying where where do we need to cut and um it, i want to try to have that discussion on the 28th if we can so and and my view from that is like here are areas that and we can disagree, but here are areas that I would like people to go back and look at their budgets, not, and, and I would shy, my personally, I would shy away from saying, hey, Brenda, you cut your budget by $22 in this line item. I'd rather say, hey, Brenda, we need $22 somewhere. Can you look at your, your budget and do that? Or obviously not Brenda, but whoever right. it is that we're talking Anybody. to. Anybody, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah um, uh, I, Oh, go on ahead. The way out, wanted to know. She whispered in my ear. Are we going to get an email about Thursday's meeting? Yes. She, she didn't know what was going to happen Thursday. So. Okay. But anyway, leave, um, leave, I leave will let her do that. Know. I hope when I get home. So I have a question because mm -hmm. they're closing the warrant on Wednesday. Yes. Should we have a place marker in the warrant for capital debt? We probably should, so we, we have the option to do that if we want to. And we in, can in, always not do it. Right? And in particular, I was thinking if they need to order that ambulance, we don't have the funds for it because we want to spend funds on the other small little capital items we can do. If we were to authorize debt for that, that would put that off for those two years that it's going to take to build the ambulance. Just a thought. But we'd have it authorized so they could go ahead and order it. We actually, so you said they're closing, the, is it this Wednesday? That's what I thought, the 22nd? I was told the 22nd. So how would we make any capital purchases if the warrants close? Don't we typically have warrant articles for each capital purchase? There, there would be just, just you know, the blurb for capital. There'd be a oh, warrant okay. article for capital. It wouldn't really say anything else. But if we need to authorize a, a rolling capital debt item or whatever we wanted to do, I think that has to be a separate article, okay. right? Yeah, I, I would think so, yeah. Okay. Well, that's a good idea. 
something Casey's been talking about for a long time. And um, with everything that we have going on, maybe, you know, instead of, instead of depleting our capital stabilization completely, maybe we could use that to help fund some of the debt payments, but um, that might help us to get some of that capital that we really need to have. Like I know the highway department is desperate for a few things. Yep. Yeah. And then you think by next Tuesday, we can go through the capital items, On the 28th, right? yeah. Yeah. So okay. I think the goal would be, we have to do library on the 28th and capital on the 28th. And it would be nice to get as much of the rest of this done between tonight and Thursday, Thursday. as possible. Yeah, we're almost done. We'll be done Thursday with our capital plan. And then okay. we can present it next Tuesday. Excellent. Great. Yeah. Because I think all we have on the agenda for thir uh, for Tuesday is the library before that. So we should commit the rest of the time to the Capitol, which makes sense. Okay, great. Okay. Um, can we go ahead and I just picked out a few miscellaneous ones that have been just yep. sitting here. How about accountant expense 135-5400? And that is for 17350 What was that number? Uh, 135-5400. Oh, thank you. You got a inconsistency on the account number, you know. Brenda? Um, it's it's, it's 5400 on here. It's yeah. 5420 on the financial. Yeah, it's it's I don't a, know which is right. Just it's, FYI. It's just general. Not yeah. A big deal. Yeah. And I can okay. change that. I'll make a motion to approve account and expense account 135-5400 for $17,350. Do we have a second? Second. All right. Discussion? I think the only thing I changed was um, I lowered the mileage and upped the audit by 500. Wasn't sure whether he would increase but I would think he would and is that enough I don't know but I'm sure that the rest of my budget could probably cover it because I usually don't take advantage of all the classes and meetings that I could do you don't have enough meetings <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> uh, uh, any discussion nice. no small increase. Yep, <laughs> that's great. Um, so it's been moved and seconded for account and expense at $17,350. Any discussion? All those in favor? 400, that's unanimous. Next. I thought we could go to the treasurer collector salaries and that's 145-5110. <laughs> Is this the one we've voted once and it didn't pass no no okay. we voted the um town clerk that didn't pass okay got it so should okay. we do town clerk also tonight i i think we can wait with that one if you want it do, doesn't matter but i might be let's nice save to, that for next, yeah the 20 so it's kind okay. of affiliated with this in a way right it, it is so the um assistant town clerk used to be in this budget it's been taken out completely. Um, okay, that makes sense. Then uh, I've just dis I've discussed this before, so you, you you probably have it in your minds. The district stipends they used to be paid directly to the people, but the people are doing all of the work within their forty hours a week. So the money really belongs to the town, but. You can't really take it away from them now that you've been giving it to them. So we're going to have the districts pay the town. The town's going to pay the stipend to the employee. And so these are all the correct numbers. Um, that's why I gave you a new treasurer collector salary um, budget last week, because I finally got Deerfield area fire protections numbers that they plan to do for next year. Um, Sarah was hired and this would be a step increase for her, um, which would happen six months after and not necessarily on July 1st. So it won't happen right on July 1st, but um, 
and then estimating that we would we would be hiring somebody soon for the assistant position and then moving that person to a step two after six months. So there's a new position at 65542. No. It's it, it used to no, be 62076. Okay. Correct. Okay. It was so Sarah. No now it'll be a new person. Correct. We've just added over time just and a the small, stipends. A small number, yes, and mm -hmm. the stipends. And then Sarah is now eligible for her first longevity pay. I'll make a motion okay. to approve treasury collector salaries count 145 5110 for 159502 dollars. You have a second? Second. Any discussion? It's always nice to see a decline. <laughs> well, it's not really a decline, it's a move. Right. It just moved. Yeah. It's a 10 point, it's a 10% increase, but most of that 5% is the raise that they get and 5% is the stipends, stipends. that didn't mm -hmm. show up before. Right. Which are offset by money coming in. So, all right, any further discussion? No, all those in favor? That's unanimous four zero zero. Okay. Um, I think Trevor has left us, but do you want to do the town office expense and the general insurance, or do you want to wait till they're available? We could always move on to something else if you want to. Um, we don't want to do treasure collector expense. Oh, I think Since we did, didn't we? Page. Huh? We did treasure collector. We oh, we did? did? We already did that one. Oh, I didn't write on it. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Oh, I had that one week where I didn't have my book. Oh, there we go. Okay, so wrote, what are we doing? I'm sorry. Um, yeah. I was thinking either town office expense and general insurance, or we could move on to uh, building inspections. Do you have some numbers? So town office expense is 192-5430. Let's do that. Trevor, did you want to be part of that conversation? We were just going to go through a couple of the select board budgets that we didn't do last time. Okay. So town office expense um, being budgeted for exactly the same number as fiscal 23. Um, Has the select board voted this yet? I wanted to say she wanted to hold off on this. We held off on the select board expense budget last week. Um, I have to say I'm a little concerned about this budget because our publishing costs are so astronomical and we have way overspent that budget for the last couple of years because of the amount of business the town of Deerfield is doing. True. Um, I know we're making some of the some of the uh, individual committees take on the expense for some of their hearings like the planning board has been paying for their hearings. Um, yeah, we didn't vote for this one yet. So you want to wait with that one too? Yeah, because I remember you were, had a concern. And we well, I had a concern about, about this. I, I just brought that one up now, but the concern I had was the select board expense budget that I think you were going to relook at Wednesday night, right? So let's pass on yes. this. Let's one. skip that yes. one. General okay. insurance, can we do? I think so. All right, let's try that. <clears throat> General insurance? Yeah. yeah. To make a motion to approve general insurance account 196 You have a second? For $65,520. Second. <clears throat> Any discussion? This is just straight up liability insurance. Yes. How about property? That too? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it, it could be that this is a little low, but if it is, it would take a small reserve fund transfer for it. Um, I know we've overspent the current year budget by a little bit, but I don't remember exactly what it is. Not a lot. No. And sometimes we get dividends back. 
Mm -hmm. in that current year we just haven't received ours Reminded. for this year yet which is why i've been waiting to do the reserve fund transfer because it could be that that's just going to get wiped out that's okay. from maya from maya so from the classes yep. and stuff we take yeah yep. right. any further discussion no all those in favor all right. that passes four zero zero so we could go to the um, building inspections uh, payroll budget, which is 241-5110. Do a motion? 241-5110. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve inspections department payroll account 241-5110 for $175,292. Second. Okay. So this is a, a pretty standard increase for um, Bob and for Amy for the for the uh, commissioner and for the um, the inspections. Um, assistant. Uh, the part-time inspectors went from $38 an hour to 40. So a, a real minuscule uh, increase there. Didn't change the hours for any of them. Did add um, 20 hours of overtime just to create a little cushion in the budget for um, any, any additional time that Amy needs to spend. Now, what's interesting is Amy brought to me today an IGR. It was from 1998. So she was gonna look for a more recent one to see if there was one more recent in regards to the Wetlands Protection Fund. And the Wetlands Protection Fund in that IGR stated that you could in fact charge salaries that are directly related to the time spent on wetlands things, hmm. um, but you have to charge the salary and the benefits to that, to that um, it, it, you would keep it in this budget, but you could um, use that as a funding source for the operations budget from the Wetlands Protection Fund. And the reason this came up is because the Wetlands Protection Fund continues to build money and build money and build money, and we rarely spend out of it. So right now we have $30,000 in that fund. So Amy brought that up today that maybe that would be a way to help support the budget which would be really nice. It wouldn't change this line item, but it could be a funding store source that we could oh, use sorry. for this budget this year. Mm. And I don't think Thank it would be a lot, you know, maybe she's spending two hours a week on wetlands items mm -hmm. um, on an average, but two hours a week is still yeah, something better than up. nothing. Yeah, it yeah. just sits there otherwise. You're over time? Yeah. Um, how much does that fund increase every year? I can't, I can't tell you. I mean, just it, order of a few hundred, a yeah. Thousand, uh, um, I don't even know. That's one I don't really pay fees, that much right, attention for to. Any, um, for any wetland work, we get fees and it goes in there. You know what's interesting? So, so the whole reason this came up in the first place is over the last maybe five, six years, maybe even seven years, the town of Deerfield has stopped putting any concom revenues into the general fund and everything's been put into the wetlands protection fund which i don't think is appropriate i think there's some things that have to belong in the general fund and some things that belong in the wetlands protection fund and we're slowly very slowly because this is something alex started looking at almost a year ago for us alex hershenrader um we're slowly figuring out what can go into the general fund and what can go into the wetlands protection fund. So Amy is starting to separate some of that out, but yeah. just so far for this year, we've put in $1,887 and 50 cents. So almost $2,000 so far this year. And so right now that fund is sitting at 32,422. So it's been about 10 or 15 years. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, it just so, it, it just doesn't make sense to let it sit there. And I know yeah, we, we so, just used it. We just used it for a wetlands violation. And so we had a consultant come in and um, 
work with the landowner and that cost us $850. So we did charge this for that 850 bucks. I just wanted to make sure that, you know, uh, doing some salary contribution wasn't going to basically start drawing it down long term. As long as we're within the yeah. annual increase, I think it's fine. Okay. Would we want to draw it down? Yeah, some. I would we'll think we'd want to draw some. it down some, yeah. Well, over, I mean, maybe some. over the next, you know, five, 10 years, if we could, you know, slowly work Get it down. down to 10,000 or something. Save, save yeah. the, to a more reasonable things like number. Consultant fees. Sure. Or, you know, Sure. Yeah, you know when when we're doing peer reviews, we collect money ahead of time, and we pay for for the peer review out of the monies that the that the applicant gives us. Mm -hmm. But there's all these other fees that sometimes don't cost us anything. Where you know it's it's just for us to take a look as a committee, mm -hmm. the CONCOM committee, who are volunteers um, to look at that. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, time. I don't know if the town has ever considered hiring a, a conservation agent. I know Bernardston is doing that. Is that right? And I and I know that they oftentimes take nominal fees, but I think our Concom team does a pretty good job. Yep. <clears throat> so, all right. It's been moved and seconded for inspections department. Payroll at 175,292. Any other questions or discussion? The, oh, the, I, oh, go ahead. I was going to say the only, only, and I maybe shouldn't say this in in a live meeting, but <laughs> I'm not sure that that position warrants a 40 hour a week. I, I'm not sure that it's a 40 hour a week position from what I see. And I don't know that the town is willing to do anything time. about that. I don't that, know but... if it's a conflict of interest or not, but we have a lot of trouble keeping up with maintenance on the buildings. And part of what we need is somebody who just notices yeah. and hmm. gets things done. And it seems like that would be within the skill set of the person who is the inspections commissioner. And if it's not a conflict of interest for the inspections commissioner or whatever his job is um, to also evaluate. work on maintenance or evaluate maintenance or something that might be to an inspect area. the buildings. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Seems like that's um, a building. I don't know. I, do I, I, mean, I know I'm speaking out of turn, but, but we'll have to look it, at that. It's, yeah, it's, oh, it's not oh, your job. It's no, it, it, but it's just so, something uh, but, from observation. Um, that has bothered me. And it's a fairly well paid position. Well, now a lot of this is offset. I mean, the town gets fees, correct, for a lot of the service. Yeah. Oh, yes. And in fact, the, the town uh, pretty much covers this budget pretty well with with yeah. fees. Yeah. And and the town is not supposed to necessarily make money off of off of this. Right. service either so probably why it wasn't looked at before okay any further discussion or questions yeah uh, it's been moved and seconded i already said this all those in favor <laughs> <laughs> all right that's unanimous four zero zero All right, the very next one is 241-5400, Inspections Department Expense. I make a motion to approve Inspections Department Expense count 241-5400 for 4,950 bucks. Second. Do we have the uh, inspection permitting software somewhere else in this budget? Yes. Okay. So in contracted services, okay. you have the annual fee for it, um, assuming that you're going to use ARPA funds to buy it or something. Oh, Where did that come from? <laughs> Casey. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Any I mean, discussion the, no, the issue, on this one? The issue is that it, that department generally. It's the same exact price as last year. Mm -hmm. oh, and it should. All right. Support All those in favor? All right. Yeah. That's unanimous. John and Mark. <laughs> just keep Which copying that because that's what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. 
Okay, did you did you vote that one? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> yep. Trevor and I were having our little side conversation. <laughs> so the very next one is emergency management for 291-5400. Um, this is basically a stipend for um, um, Chief Pachoric right now, who is our assistant EMD or our or EMD. EMD. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I thought um, somebody else used to do this. Yes. Yes. But last year, the select board for fiscal 23 chose to um, give that to John since he was doing so much of the work. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I make a motion to approve emergency management count 291-5400 for $2,800. Second. <laughs> Any discussion? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Flat funding. Yeah. That's always nice. All those in favor? Mm -hmm. All right, it's unanimous. Okay. Um, all right. Do you want to do the schools? No. no. Okay. That <laughs> <It> was fast. That <laughs> was fast. Um, I'm trying to think of what else has been sitting out here. Um, Council on Aging, 541 5400. Uh, we rarely spend this money, but um, I think the intent yeah. is at yeah, some point in time to, to do this, right? Yeah, they keep. They're starting to become active and then COVID hit. And so they that's it. Yes. Backed okay. off a little bit, but okay. hoping they're going to get back to it. Make year. a motion approve council and aging account 541 5400 for 500 bucks. Second. Yeah. <laughs> well, sorry, we're getting bungy. <laughs> but um, so, so what types of things would this be spent on? My Just guess, like outreach? It or? would be maybe outreach or meetings or um, postage, right? Something like that if they wanted to reach okay. out to the, to the community. Uh, that, that's my thought. Okay. So Council on Aging is not the Board of Oversight. Co correct. Correct. Right. It, this it is, is just a, Deerfield. Just, oh, it's just Deerfield. Yeah. Okay. Group, group to gets together to meet with the other three towns to work on senior issues, I think. Okay. Any other discussion? Um, I, so it has, does this not get spent? Well, you can see it hasn't in the last um, five years. Not generally. Not at all. We, we, because they weren't, they weren't constituted. And then um, we, we got a push to get them all together. They started to meet, COVID hit, nobody's met since. So they're hoping, I think, to get back to, you know, whether a hundred dollars is good or two hundred and fifty is fine. But and my other question is, you know, how much does the council on aging membership allow the, the senior center for oversight? Yeah. They don't. They would attend our meetings, so they would they would be an advocate at the board of oversight's meetings to advocate for senior services or or anything going on at the senior center, and then they would meet generally with um, Waitley and Sunderland Council on Aging's to kind of lobby the Board of Oversight for a site, you know, for a new senior center or a new program or, a, or transportation or um, I know they've, they've met with, <coughs> with an entity in Waitley that friends or something, I can't remember the name of it, neighbors, I think it is. And so they're just an ad hoc group of people getting together to try and advocate for the seniors. Any discussion? <coughs> Any other questions? No. Anybody? All right. All those in favor? That's unanimous. Okay. How about Veterans District Assessment 543-5400? Nothing we can do about that one. It's an um, assessment to us by the Veterans District. Do a motion? Somebody else do that. I move. <laughs> we uh, recommend the sum of $13,195 for Veterans District Assessment, account number 543-5400. Second. <laughs> All right. Any discussion? Yeah. So you said that basically there's nothing to do about this. Right. right? Yeah. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. How about the ADA coordinator 549-5400? Did we do vets benefits already? We did. 
Make a motion to approve ADA coordinator account 549-5400 for 250 bucks. Second. Any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor? That passes unanimous. Okay, do you wanna go further or should yep. we? Keep going. Okay, so the rec department director salary <laughs> is 634-5110. Okay. This um, is straight off the, oh no. Well, so so what, what here, here's the deal with this position. This woman works incredible hours and way more than she ever gets paid for. And we and all sorts of odd hours. She's there at games. She is there all the, the time. And she it, does yeah. so many wonderful things for the town. She, she does, does that Valentine's thing. She, she does these yeah. little craft things. And really, this should be paid at a 40 hour a week pay. But we didn't think that the budget would support that big of an increase. So we went from 34 hours a week to 37 and a half hours a week, just to be able to make it a little bit more fair and equitable for her. She seemed okay with that. So that was kind of mine and Casey's proposal. And um, she like was there's very- There's a lot of recreation she, stuff going good. on. There is, she just does so much. She was good with that? She was, she was, <coughs> she, she was happy with it, yeah. Um, does, what's the select board say about it? We haven't voted it yet. Okay. Okay. But we'll look at it tomorrow night, or Wednesday night. Wednesday. Okay, in that case, let's wait for the select board mm -hmm. to vote that. Okay. So we don't have a motion yet. So how about 691-5400, which is the historical commission? Okay. And that's just a level funding. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve <laughs> or recommend the historical commission budget of $1,175 account 691-5400. Second. Any discussion? John John Nove, um, you know, is the chair of the commission, and I know he often tries. He tries to do some good work with this. Um, sometimes he gets done with what he wants to do, and sometimes sometimes there's a little lag, but. It was just like he's changed from oral history to. Yes. Central Village, no, photo supply. So. And interpretive okay. signage. Yeah. Okay. Any discussion? No, all those in no. favor? <laughs> That's unanimous, 400. Zero, zero. Okay. How about 692 5800, which is Veterans Day Memorial Day expense? Um, John Sizz is asking for the same amount as he has in past years, whatever he doesn't have here, he spends out of a couple of um, special revenue funds that, that he has to use. I'll make a motion to recommend Veterans Day Memorial Day expense account number 692-5800 in the amount of $2,000. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous, 400. Zero, zero. How about the FERCOG core assessment? It's 830-5400. Okay. Um, that actually, the assessment has gone down this year. Um, yes. I don't know what the reason is for it, but you have the sheet behind there that, that um, shows the amount for the town of Deerfield. We'll make what would happen if it didn't get voted? What's that? What would happen if it didn't get voted? We lose a lot of services. They do a lot Is for that us. What would happen? Mm. Yeah. Okay. They do a ton, ton for us. There's, there are um, a couple of assessments. This one, and then there's an assessment that um, two of them that get put into Kevin's budgets uh, for bids and things like that. I probably get kicked off a chair of the council too. But that's all right. <laughs> I get another night free. <laughs> I'll make a motion then to recommend the FERCOG core assessment account 
830-5400 in the amount of $42,264. Second. All right, any discussion? Okay, that's good. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Unfunded sick leave and vacation. Now this is one that um, is kind mm -hmm. of under the control of the select 9, board. 910-5800. Yep, 910-5800, right. Um, Casey was having second thoughts about this the other day, but she also knows how tight the budget is. We have two possible people that might be retiring this coming year. If their budgets can support the, the cost of the retirement, we usually take it out of their budgets. Um, in past years, it's been doable. Um, we haven't spent that much, but we could overspend this pretty easily if, if there was no room in those budgets. Make a motion to recommend unfunded sick leave and vacation account 910-5800, uh, amount of $10,000. Second. We have no idea, really. Yeah. We don't. It's a crap shoot. You're absolutely right. You never know. You know, most most of the time when we lose somebody in the town of Deerfield, we take a while to replace that position. So there's usually room in their budget to support the, mm. the vacation and sick time of somebody retiring. Um, rarely have we run into problems. Yeah, we have to come to the board. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't know for sure if they're retiring or not. So right. it's un unexpected, whatever the words are that allow you to reserve Un funds. Unforeseen, right. unforeseen right. And, and extraordinary. <laughs> so we don't set aside any money during as time as time goes on to fund it ahead of time a little bit. Like, no, like just just as each year, you know, with the year's budget. We use, we use this. Yeah. Okay. Now there is a number that gets calculated when we do our annual audit and the auditors put in an unfunded um, amount, a liability for that. It, it's compensated abs absences, mm -hmm. um, it but, to... but we usually don't, we don't carry that liability on the, on the books here. Any other discussion or questions? No. We're happy with leaving it at 10,000. Yeah. yeah. All those in favor? That's unanimous. Okay. That covers, I, I think, most of the miscellaneous stuff. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm at a loss. Um, we could do the reserve fund. Uh, that is, that is I think in. Let's stop here. Oh, okay. It's 8.35. It's 8.35. Other business. We got through a lot. Yeah. A lot of little Do ones. We have so other business. Yes. Other business. Yeah. Brenda, when you talked about wetlands protection fund, you got me looking at the statement of changes and fund balance. Uh huh. It looks to me like we might have a lot of money sitting there that we could use. Uh huh. Yeah, thirty-two thousand. Huh? Thirty-two thousand. No, I mean different funds. It's like, oh no. Well, no. About, like try <laughs> to. <laughs> Huh? I went in and said, what I, can we use here? Well, I, I squashed him. <laughs> Tritown Beach District is $17,000. Which, why can't we use them? That's, just... that's their fund that we now use for, for their operations. Right. But is that reflected in the budget? No. Well, no, it is in, in Deerfield's assessment towards that. It's just like our assessment towards um ems or our assessment towards the senior center operates the same way we have an appropriation line item where deerfield's portion is put into that fund to to be able to fund their expenditures and then waitley contributes and then in the case of the senior center sunderland does too we're talking about we have to get cut it back to delay paying bills as much as possible mm -hmm. yeah sort of yeah because i am concerned that they're going to overspend it yes so you've been through these, Trevor, the select board? Yeah. Uh, yes. and there's a, there's a, yeah. a small smattering of them that I'll close out at the end of the year and we'll put it into the general fund, but 
And then I need to do a little research because we have some money in the sale of property fund. And I know that could be used for, I'm, I'm thinking it, it could be used for capital. Yeah. So um, I just need to make sure that it could be used for the kind of capital we're talking about. And I'll, I'll research that before Tuesday night. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's like a hundred and is 125,000 left. I think something like that. So which of these funds get bundled into general at the end of the fiscal year? And the really none, none, um, un unless it's a grant that we're completely, completely done with. Um, like for instance, the FEMA fund, um, FEMA reimbursed us for payroll costs that were actually in our general fund budget during the year that we, we uh, did the vaccination clinics. And so, um, they reimbursed us in that fund for those payroll costs, even though we'd spent the payroll costs out of the general fund. So I will move that money into the general fund at the end of this fiscal year, since we received the money in this fiscal year. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Trevor. Thank you. Thank Have you so night. much. All right. Make Anything a motion else? to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? All right, we're adjourned at 8.38 p.m.